The champ is here. Meerkat Mall. Who? Baller Alert. Calling out Baller Alert. Got no problems with Baller Alert. But everybody on Baller Alert and everybody else out there talking shit about me. Here we go. Headless. A skill like Rita lift the ocean. I just like my planet don't spin. Meerkat Mall. Skin all over marks like I'm haunted. Revving up from a la la like profits. It's never much. I'm more torn in the cockpit. Don't interrupt. My turbulence slaps. My path massive. Demands panoramic. <laughs> Your damn thousand leagues up zero sweat My hand got to rag rip guys like Jet City. Stand off the blood blades, every side listen. Shitty, your damn thousand leagues up zero sweat dripping. My hand got to rag rip guys like Jet City. Stand off the blood blades, every side listen. I'm drinking. Severe swerving, I told lag off uncertainty to your zipper locks. My salvia sound recommends shot 60 shots a second on a hex. Drop a strike between his time and solar plex. Drop having a little uncertainty. Zipper, 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 I can't help yourself but skin it down. I've dealt with yourself, I tricked hell out. I'm all held to skelter, I'm on that bounce. And I'm in left, but reflex getting out. In my chest, feel like it's fixing the bounds. Bounds, bitch, I can't be the road. Crashing in the planes, I crash the stroll. Max out my oath, don't blame me, I've no soul. Like 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 I skit like I'm no use. My head better expand like I choose juice. I binge all black and has my tragic ends. To a means I can't establish. Noise of no man, the sapphire strikes. Screaming this in both hands, can kill myself twice. Bonds tremble like dildos. Rolled by dubbies, traumatized the facade. Broke your hearts like dubbies. Talking all that bullshit! like it you support it the week is going slow talk through it so how are you doing this is how i'm doing 
tips very low now. But I've noticed tips very low right now. The week is going slow. It gets to me. My life is ruined. This is how I'm doing. The losers out there think that they know shit. Kiss my fucking ass and eat my shit right now. A full podcast book. Full gameplay streams book. Everything's book. Everything's book. Can't do anything crazy. And I don't even have enough to buy groceries. It sucks. The week is going slow. Tough through it. Meerkat Mall. So how are you doing? The chat. That's how I'm doing. Oh! Tips very low now. But I've noticed tips very low right now. I'm drinking. The week is going slow. It gets to me. My life is ruined. This is how I'm doing. Don't. Losers out there who think that they know shit. Kiss my fucking ass and eat my shit right now. So how are you doing? This is how I'm doing. Ladies and gentlemen. So how are you doing? Hey. 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 I don't know what to say, but I can say a all day. Slay. Welcome everyone. It's the first ever stream of 2024. Happy New Year, everybody. Hope you get a nice one. Uh, hope you had a nice time with your family and all the creatures in your household during the, the holiday festivities and the season. Uh, but now we're back into another season. And you know what time it is. It's time for a dark side fill. That's what I'm talking about. And today we got a very juicy one. Because a new saga is arising. A new saga is looking up over the horizon and is like, Hey, that's uh, some, uh, some uh, potential for some uh, interesting content out here. And of course I'm talking about ya boy, Mr. Documentarian Guy, Michael Klum. Uh, I don't know if it's Michael, but Mike, Mike Klum, Mr. Documentary Guy, uh, who is, of course, making a documentary on Dark Side Phil, as many people I'm sure have suggested him to do because his documentary on Boogie 2988 was very successful. Obviously, he's going to set his sights onto the next individual, and that happens to be Dark Side Phil. Uh, now, Mike, the other day, uh, of course, in the screenshot that I'm showing right now, it says today, but it's an old screenshot, I guess, of the day it happened, which was like two days ago. I don't even know. Maybe it was yesterday. I don't know. I've been busy. But um, he announced on Kiwi Farms, of all places, that he is working directly with Phil and will include original content of his current day-to-day -day life. And I quote, I have a video with Phil. I don't have a video with Phil. And... And I discussing it at this point, which would be the only way to prove this all to you. But there is also no incentive to lie. And you can simply see my past work with Boogie2988 and make your own assumption as to whether or not I would lie about doing a documentary on Phil. Well, I haven't seen that documentary. I guess now I kind of have to. I've seen some of the clips, but I didn't care about Boogie. But now for scientific and research purposes, I guess I got to watch it. So I will. Um, big ups to Tricky for 13 months, dude. And uh, the other people, let me give some shout outs real quick. Big ups Hate Army for 11 months. Omega Kirk for 23. And Lunar Guardian for 24. Thank you guys for your outstanding long term style support. Right. Um, one of these days, I'm going to watch the Boogie documentary. My takeaway from that, and, um, and, and basically the opinions of people that I've seen, is that Boogie looks bad, and he is presented in a pretty impartial way. Uh, but, of course, I got to verify that by watching the thing myself. I'm not going to contact Mike Klum. I'm sure he's open to many other people and many people that actually want to talk to him and know more stuff about Phil and have been covering him from way back in the day are going to reach out to him. So I'm sure they're going to do a good job. Uh, hello, Proper. I'm sure Proper reached out to him. I think he mentioned something on, on Twitter or something uh, along those lines. I'm sure there's going to be people from all over the place reaching out to the guy. Hopefully, 
he's going to get the job done uh, in a kind of adequate way, I guess, or at least I can hope. Uh, it's kind of too early to tell what the, the, the whole angle is going to be with the documentary. DSP is yet to announce it. He's doing that today. Uh, I'm going to read the second post of Mike Klum and also a little bit of a video here that is only two minutes long. And also yesterday, uh, 19 hours ago, uh, he had a phone call with Review Tech USA on his streaming page. So we get to listen to this as well. And then after that, uh, we get to do the level one experience for today. So we're going to watch the podcast and see what Phil has to announce. Yes, I also know he did the, the DSP Classics channel, which is basically the KO gaming channel, but with a new avatar, where he's going to be posting things from 10 years ago, also known as the time he used to be a terrible human being. And he hated life, and he was super depressed, and he was making edgy content for children, I guess. But he is so proud of that content, he's going to upload it again and call it Classics. Classics. That's, that's a very nice DSP thing to do. So let's uh, real quick go through... The general post, I think this is the main post uh, that he made in the thread that launched the thread uh, for the, the documentary, right? So let me get this up on the screen in a reading, readable capacity. And uh, let's, yeah, let's, let's see what's going to come out of this. Uh, hello all, this post is to announce that there is an official feature-length documentary being produced on Dark Side Phil. My name is Mike Klum. I'm a producer and a documentary creator working on a film about the life and work of Phil Burnell, a.k.a. Dark Side Phil. The film will document Phil's current life as a content creator, his childhood and rise to popularity, and his various controversies, his downfall from the peak, and his future. It's very interesting. We get to, we get to use a time machine to document what his future is going to be like. I'm joking. I know what he means. Uh, I'm seeking a few things from this community by making this post. So this is a post on Kiwi Farms, as you know, some of the more dedicated um, people who want to discuss DSP, they usually do it over there because it's, it's kind of a treasure trove of info and pretty much everything gets archived. So if you want to find something, you're probably going to go there. Uh, I'd love to interview a member of the Kiwi Farms community regarding Phil and your thoughts and opinions of Phil as a person and content creator, as Phil calls them detractors. Or if there are any fans in here too, would love to get your input. If you're concerned over privacy, doxing, etc., etc., yeah, you get to remain private. Then secondly, I'd love input to show what you'd like to see in a documentary on Phil. Well, I can just give my input right now on the spot. Uh, and I think from what I read on that thread, there's, uh, I'm kind of just echoing the sentiment of a couple of other people. First of all, I would like to see... Uh, an, a live in-person interview inside the Snort Fort. Now, I'm thinking that Mike has no problem traveling. He would go to Ranton, but the interview might take place in his hotel room or something. Uh, like, I've, I've seen some interviews being done like that. Now, I, I want him to go to the actual Snort Fort. I would love to see that. Of course, DSP being a much more paranoid and sheltered uh, hermit than Boogie, I think that is going to be an obstacle for quote unquote security reasons or whatever else you might say. Uh, also, I would like to see some interviews with people that are not uh, public personalities anymore. Maybe Rambo has something to say. Maybe, I don't know, Panda Lee. I think that might be a little bit too ambitious, but I mean, if you're making a documentary, why not? That's what documentaries do, right? You reach out to people that were impactful along the way. Maybe, who knows? Maybe Fred Fox is going to come back for an anonymous tell all interview. That would be interesting. Um, then I'm, I'm sure he will have interviews with plenty of detractors uh, who would be up for it and who would volunteer. Um, and as to anything else, I guess it's kind of up in the air. We'll see how it shapes up. Like I said, I haven't watched the Boogie documentary, so I need to watch that first to get a, a kind of a representation of Mike's whole workflow and his thought process and the way he wants to structure this. Then... Uh, I've seen some people be kind of um, upset at the way that Mike has been addressing Phil and talking about that Phil was a professional and kind of a nice guy or stuff like that. Of course, even if you don't like the guy that you're going to do an, an interview with, you want to make him feel comfortable. And the more you make people like Phil feel comfortable, the more vulnerable they become to trick questions or kind of how it happened in the side scrollers interview because he is he was super 
confident going into it. He thought that he had it all figured out. He had all the right answers. He just wanted to tell them what they wanted to hear. And it just simply didn't work out. So I guess it's kind of up to speculation for now. Kind of interesting. If you think you got something to say to Mike and you want to feed some info his way, he has linked his uh, socials, I guess. Uh, at Mike Klum or Mike at ClumGroup.com. So there you go. He seems pretty open to taking all that feedback information. Now let's watch this two minute video. All people of Kiwi Farms, my name is Mike Klum. I am coming to you here with a opportunity. I am currently working on a documentary on DSP, otherwise known as Dark Side Phil, otherwise known as the King of Hate, formerly the King of Hate. And I am looking for people who might be interested in being a part of this film, being interviewed or um, part of this film in, in, in other ways. I, I will be working with Phil. I'm working with uh, people that have commented on Phil in the past, as well as seeking um, fans, detractors, all sides of the story. So I'm coming here um, to see if there's anyone that's interested in being a part of the film. We'd obviously be able to keep whatever level of privacy or anonymity as possible. Uh, I recently did a film with Boogie2988, um, so you can kind of see the nature of the film, and uh, it is both critical as well as um, will show positive, negative, all types of sides of the whole Dark Side Phil saga. Um, so I will put my email here. It's mike at clumgroup.com uh, or you can message me on, on social media, but I am looking for anyone that might be. All right. Is that it? Oh yeah. That's pretty much it though. <laughs> um, sharing pretty much anything about dark side film that they'd want to want to share. If you're not interested in being the film, but you want to comment or send me some ideas of things you'd like me to address or talk about, I am currently in the creative process and we will begin filming here soon so i'd love to hear your insight or anything you'd want to see in the film have us do whatever appreciate this and uh, hope to hear from some of you and have a good day all right from hey big ups uh kevin for the behind the scenes sticker dude uh from what i've seen and my general impression of this guy is he feels like a professional he feels like he is making actual documentaries so if he went about the easy way and just do a, a softball fluff piece, propaganda piece, um, everybody's just going to call him out immediately. I don't think he wants to do that. I think he wants to do his best, kind of like Craig, to consider all the, the perspectives and all the angles and all the points of view. Uh, but I guess time will tell, you know. He is clearly working with Phil. That's not a secret. They've been exchanging, I guess, emails. Maybe they talk to each other on a, on a Zoom call or something. So I don't expect this to be without DSP's, you know, uh, finger in it. Uh, but th kind of the appeal of DSP, we got to stand, we got to take a step back for a second. The appeal of DSP is that his stupid manipulation bullshit just doesn't work on normal people. So he's going to try, whenever he's encountered with a difficult question, he's going to try and weasel his way out of it. But that only just makes him look more guilty, just like what happened in the interview. So as, as for DSP swindling everybody and just like destroying them and um, orchestrating from the shadows this like fluff piece that nobody thinks is going to be, but then he, he makes it like that. I don't think that's possible. Uh, now let's see the phone call here uh, when Rich talked to Mike and let's see what, what can we get out of this. Hello? It actually is. Uh, can I put you on speaker? I'm actually streaming right now. Is that okay? Okay. Hey, everybody. This is uh, Mike Klum. He, uh, we have the exclusive again. What's going down? What's going down, my friend? We so I hear. Well, I, I hear you're I entering the that. land of Philip Rennell. Well, it's it, it's moving along. It's moving along. Um, and, uh, yeah, the cat's out of the bag. So we're, we're entering, we're entering the world. So. And now is this with his blessing or is it 
just you're doing the doc. Yeah, I'm working and- with I, I'm working with Phil, and um, you know most of the stuff I'm going to do is going to be with with the people. I think it's uh, there's a lot of people that are good at the documentaries that are sort of the uh, commentary stuff. I, but I, I do think um, you know I like to get in there and get access and, and have fun with it. So, so far, I mean, Phil, I've had some great conversations and, um, yeah. Right. Here's the thing. Uh, we know that the commentary people he's talking about is probably Murahar, Turkey, Tom, maybe rich is going to be involved in this in some capacity. I would be surprised if he wasn't, but here's the thing. As long as DSP thinks that he's on top of things and he has a bunch of confidence, things can work out. You just got to make them feel comfortable. That's the thing. When you put the frog in the pot and you slowly turn up the heat, you want to make sure the frog is feeling comfortable. And I'm not saying that this is going to be like a a secret expose, but all that he has to do is present DSP in, you know, his natural personality. And his natural personality is enough to repel every fucking normal person on on the planet. So far, we're we're moving along with with making, making a film, so... Interesting. I bet you because he saw the boogie numbers because he would have never, ever. And you're not. He he must know from watching the boogie documentary. You're not just going to it's not going to be a propaganda piece for him. Right. But Phil thinks that he's much better than boogie and he hasn't really done nothing wrong and he's done everything correct. So that makes him feel comfortable that his documentary is actually going to be more of a banger because he genuinely believes his shit. Because, you know, with Boogie, he's, like, uh, pretending to embrace it, and he's, he gets off on the humiliation of stuff. While Phil is like, no, none of that shit is even true, dude. So, yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't think it's going to be like the Boogie thing. So Because, like, DSP is a, it's a different beast. I'm shocked. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, not a hit, it's not a hit piece either. I mean, I well, it doesn't have to be a hit piece. It's going to be what Phil is, you know, which... Phil is a, Phil is a fascinating individual that has um, been on this platform and other platforms and off platforms. It's one of the original people in the gaming sphere and love him or hate him. There's a really interesting story. So, you know, I'm, I'm here just to, to, to bring some fun to it and to, uh, you know, interview as many people as I can and, and you know, hopefully just give the people what they want, which is a fun documentary that, you know, just uh, shows, shows some cool stuff. And oh, Also, it, it, I, I saw plenty of people be under the impression that this documentary, the, the target demographic for it is going to be detractors, which is... I, I don't believe so. I think it's just going to be the normies. You're putting out a, a well-polished level of uh, you know, production value that appeals to your common viewer. So yeah, this is, it's probably not going to tell us much that we don't already know unless we're actually going into the snort fort and we have actual one-on-one interviews in person. His side, it's other people's side. I mean, it, I, I think uh, so far I've had a lot of fun working with phil already in the in try the, to relax uh, your anus and <laughs> I, I made a kiwi farms post just to cut because i wanted to talk to some of the, these detractors right some detractors so and some fans so i made that post and now like there's all these like speculative little tweets and things going out there but no so far it's been a good process with him yeah and, and i think even also at the same time mike can't say too much because if he says one wrong thing, DSP might just pull out. Because remember, last year, the narrative around the interview is that Phil agreed to it, but then they put him in a trap, and he almost got embarrassed, but then he handled it great, and everybody loves him now. But he is still very paranoid of interviews like this and just general associations with other YouTubers. The sane detractors, which I guess I would be considered a detractor, wouldn't want a hit piece. They would just want something transparent. So whether it's good or bad about Phil, sure, you know. So I think you'll capture more of an audience so long as you is the full story is there, which I know yeah, you'll no, do because you did it with Boogie, <laughs> which he wasn't yeah, thrilled, which he wasn't thrilled funny. about, which he wasn't thrilled about. Even though he green, even though he greenlit, you know, one of those unique people like in the online space that like when when I after I did the boogie, the number one requested person was Darkside Phil, 
and uh, Wings was right there. It was Wings and Dark Side Phil. And I, but I just didn't understand it. I didn't get it. I was like, what did, well, who is this guy? What did he do? Like, what, what did he do? No, I, do you know any people state, from my, my, do... I know, I'm sorry to mean to cut you off. My apologies. Yeah. Uh, do you know many people from my audience or like have said to me, Rich, I never understood your obsession with Phil, but then I started watching your streams and now even I can't stop watching Phil. So yeah. it's a, you well, get, it's called the Snortex. Like the vortex, uh, yeah, and that's but... what I've heard. The vortex. <laughs> yes. I will say whether like he's got a fantastic voice. Like it or not, the voice. Wait, what? Okay? The voice. When you hear the voice, you start listening. I mean, it's it's not quite what? Howard Stern. It's got it's a little bit pitch. Bro, come on, he's just straight up glazing right now. His voice is. What did he say? What kind of voice did Phil have? Like it or not. The Snortex. Is a fantastic like voice. Vortex, yeah, that's but what the... I've heard. It's the Vortex. Yeah. The I... fucking voice with the vocal fry and everything and the terrible fucking accent. Come on, man. We'll say. Fantastic. Whether, like, he... But that's the kind of stuff he needs to say, you know. You got to get him it comfortable. It doesn't even have to be a major detractor, Doreen Bose, or anything. Even a clear look at the Snort Fort or Cat would be an absolute W. Well, I I'm going to be having a fucking watch along to that 100%. I mean, of course. It's gonna be it's gonna be fascinating, interesting. I uh, I'm not gonna put my money on this guy. I'm not gonna buy Mike coin or Clum coin just yet, but maybe. Maybe it's gonna be good, maybe it's not gonna be good. Who fucking knows, dude? He's got a fantastic voice. Like it or not, the voice is electric. Okay? When you hear the voice, you start listening. I mean it's it's not quite Howard Stern. Hello boyfriend. Even though it's highly <laughs> unlikely, this could be the only logical stepping point to see Cat in a piece of content again. If oh, we're not seeing Cat, real, dude. It won't be on screen, but maybe a voiceover. A voiceover of Cat? No, she might be on screen, but they're gonna blur her out. So it's gonna be like a massive blob in the shot that's all blurred out. That's gonna be so funny. But yeah, Cat, I don't think she's gonna be in this. I, I, don't, I don't see why she would be in this, but maybe for the sympathy. Maybe, you know, if you think about it, because this could go like either way, who fucking knows? If DSP is really confident in the product that he's going to put out and wants to present himself in literally the most positive life, he needs to present himself as the family man, right? Because his family is constantly under assault by trolls. They're stealing his identity. They're faking bank statements. They're faking mobile game accounts. They're spending hundreds of thousands of dollars to blame him and make him look bad. Yeah, you got to present yourself in the most positive light ever. So we might get to see Cat again. We might. I, I'm, not, I'm not putting my money on that, though. It's, got, it's a little bit pitched up uh, version of Stern. It's just like, it's a great voice. So I think that the voice... Because, uh, Elizabeth for the membership, dude. Part of it, the, just the, the energy, the electricism. It's, you know, I'm, so far, the more I've talked to him, the more calls I've had with him, the more I've realized... This is an interesting guy. The documentary uh, hopefully will reflect that. And it'll be, you know, hopefully a little bit for everybody. The haters, the fans, uh, the members, and then just the overall YouTube community, which, you know, members will have a different tone. Wait, what, the, the DSP members? I'd imagine then Boogie. I, I don't know. Um, you know, Boogie's got his own personality and way he carries himself. And, and Phil is a different story. Uh, to some extent, and it'll be, you know, hopefully really entertaining. And, um, you know, I just hope that uh, there's not enough, uh, too much online buzz that has something, you know, fall apart because he's actually been really great to work with. And despite, you know, what people are speculating, it's like, you know, he's, he's a professional guy. And, you know, I know really he's like, a professional he's, guy, huh? Wow. Even, even Rich just, Cut him off right away. But Phil is a professional guy. Well, guys, you got to know when Phil knows that a lot of eyes are looking at him. TTS? Cat is looking like yes. a piece of tiramisu cake. This dunicorn can go either way, but for sure we will definitely not see Cat. <laughs> we'll see, dude. We'll see. We'll see. Maybe we will. Uh, I'm not getting my hopes up, though. I'm, I'm going to have my hopes pretty subpar. So if it turns out to be good... I'm just going to be very happy about it. I'm not hyping myself up to see Cat or a sex scene between Cat and Tyrone or Derek filming that sex scene. I'm not going to get that hyped. I I'm going to keep it reasonable. 
I don't know, depending on which way it goes, we might or may not see Cat. Um, so what I was talking about, when Phil knows that a lot of people are looking at him, especially high-profile people, he is on his best behavior. You can see that right after Moist Critical called him out on his begging. For the first week, he was like the nicest fucking dude in town. He was still his toxic self when he wanted to shit on somebody in chat. But when, when you get to see the podcast, he's like a reformed guy. It's like he just came out of prison on parole, and he's trying to not get back in. So, of course, when it comes to M M Mike Klum, DSP is going to be glazing that sack. He's going to be two-handing that shaft. 100%. I hope your time away from the Snortex was relaxing. Thank you, it was. Many European style family things. I did several. Yes, now back to regularly scheduled streams. Detroit till I die. Uh, yeah, we we back to normal. I think from tomorrow, we already have a guest on I Sunday, so everything's back. Interview. He praised Phil multiple times, and Phil probably said no wife talk, no money talk, no WWE talk. So basically, mm. nothing interesting and stuff we already know. Well. He praised him, like I already said, you, you, you need to get him comfortable. And the way you get somebody like Phil comfortable is you praise him, dude. You fucking, you, you tell him how great he is and how awesome he's been for 15 years to still have this as a job. You basically re repeat what he is telling his viewers back to him. And that's how you, you get on his side, you know? That's how you get him relaxed. And when you get him relaxed, when it, whenever you put the slightest amount of pressure, he's going to start cracking up. He he is he uh, I it, you know he 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 streams a lot so he's not just are you are you making up the cold side the right for the super <laughs> no Phil Fernell he is he he is a professional person you know he, he's he's prompt with his communication to some extent and and but um you know it's uh you know he streams a lot so it's not the type of guy you know with Boogie you call him he picks up this and that but you know phil has his schedule and everyone's a little different there are some people right. that are very strict with their schedule some people more flowing i mean and uh, i think you know, come on gotta... dog come on this is the same guy that whenever he got like a tech a tech support live chat or something he just steps away and goes and talks on the phone for like 10 minutes like it's nah it's it's not really like that but that's all right you know, know who you're working with, but yeah, Phil, Phil has been great to work with so far. And, and, um, and I've met some detractors in the past few days. So I've talked to some of these people that really don't like him or kind of don't like him. So, um, I've got some of that. We've got some, maybe some street fighter people. So, so oh, yeah, far. we got a, I think we got Jaha on this. We got Jaha. I know proper is in contact. I don't know exactly who else, maybe a bunch of people from, uh, from Kiwi farms. But there's definitely going to be plenty of people reaching out to him. That's why I'm not concerned of doing it myself, because I don't really want to. And I'm sure there's going to be people that actually want to do it who are going to do a much better job than I can. There's a, a lot of uh, interesting interesting things going, but you never know with a project like this. Oh, of course Just he contacted Tevin. My I wouldn't be surprised at all. Cat and Jasper around the house for the morning routine, stream setup, etc. It would be so fake unless it starts at 10 a.m. and involves nothing but a microwave burrito and starting stream. Yeah, imagine like he has uh, one of those morning routines in the documentary, like those uh, hustle and grind pages where it's like, I wake up at 4 a.m. I start, um, I, I, I take some vitamins. Then I do 25 push-ups in three seconds. Then I go and take a quick shower. Then I'm... I'm preparing my stream. I'm setting up my content and, and all that stuff. That would be so fucking good. Um, hopefully, we're going to get something along the lines of a day in the life of DSP. But actually, if, if Mike is really there in Renton, it's going to make it infinitely better. Otherwise, if it's all over Zoom, nah. You, you don't get that, that, level of, uh, that level of content. True documentary content. It'll be itch. Have you met? Oh, yeah. Um, uh, proper says in chat. So Keemstar, Turkey Tom, TJ Gamebox, and Mudahar has been contacted. So, yes, I'm, I'm sure there's plenty of uh, knowledgeable people. Our best scientists are going to be on this case. Especially since he reached out to TJ Gamebox. That's going to be interesting because the dude knows WWE champions. Him in person yet? Um, we, we did meet. And um, yeah, it was it was it was a good meeting, and it was uh, just yeah. kind of part of the getting to know each other process. So um, yeah, he's. Uh, 
I, I, I've, I've evaluated a lot of documentaries. I, I've turned a lot down. I've, I've just decided to not do a lot of them just for whatever reason. But, um, in the case of Phil, it was, it was good energy. And does um, he, does he take yeah, it? Does he's, he's, he take a, he's an entertainer like him or not. There's a reason he's still going. He is an entertainer. And he's, he's he is certainly an entertainer. So, um, Does he take his? Did he have to like take his skin suit off for you? Or I'm I'm just okay. You'll, I, listen, you'll have to see it. You'll have to wait and see. I can only give so much. Yeah, don't give. I know. I, I understand. You know, well, so, listen. But I just just know that that we're it, it, you know you got me on stream. I would I didn't know. I just figured I'd call you because um, I I want to interview you. He's. Um, pretty much down with me interviewing whoever, however, for the most part. And, um, you know, it's just going to be just going to be, you know, hopefully a fun doc. So I've got to interview you. I'll be probably making like an East Coast swing sure, for these interviews. Yeah. Oh, so, so it's going to be in person. You see, you can see that Mike is committed to actually doing this in person. Let's see if DSP is going to allow him. Uh, otherwise, they might just conduct the interview in like a Burger King while Cat is ordering half the menu. Well, they're they're gonna have plenty of time then, if that's the case. But I really wish they do it in the Snort Fort. I've been one. Of, Phil has considered me a quote unquote detractor since like 2016. So yeah, but you kept giving him money, so that kind of negates that consideration, Rich. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, and look, I, I'm a straight shooter. I don't know many detractors that offered to send him a PC. Meanwhile, this dude is blowing my head off with shitty fucking metal music with him i don't dislike phil you know i just laugh at his gaps so you know i'm just gonna keep it real with what i know about him and you know i'm not gonna try to tilt anything him in any direction it's just I, his philisms so yeah well it, it's you know it, it should be fun i mean he's a he's he's a cooler guy than people give him credit for and our grand oh, really kiwi farm so they all really don't like him in there um but He's, He's a cooler guy than people give him credit for, I guess. Phil on his best behavior, if he's really trying, if he's trying to get into your good graces, every fucking narcissist is a cool guy. That's, that's how they get you. They're a cool guy, and then they consistently start being less and less of a cool guy. He's funny. He's got a cool personality. Really? Person, and I, you know, I think it'll be really interesting for people to see you know that and also all the other people that will perhaps interview and what they think um you know hopefully should should be a fun one so but yeah dude i will definitely hit you up it sounds like you're in i mean we're, we're doing yeah i'm a hundred percent yeah okay, just, let so me, I'll, I'll, just give me a couple I'll, weeks in advance and yeah yeah we're probably a few months in advance just with everything yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. you know um let's uh let's stay in touch on that but i'll, I'll start to send you some dates but yeah, everyone I've hit up so far is excited to be interviewed. This seems to be potentially the number. You know, Boogie did well. Boogie was interesting. He 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 leaned in to make this thing and did you know he gave everything to it. But um, and and he's he's a legend for that in that sense. But um, this seems to be the most you know I'm not going to say in demand documentary, but you know the, it, this of all the people of all the ones I'm doing right now, when I tell people, oh, they're like, what the fuck? He agreed. Well, nobody, yeah, nobody so, has ever gotten uh, behind the scenes with Phil. That's why. That's yeah. the key. There's been plenty of, like, video essays, but not a full-fledged documentary because Phil is usually very hands-off, too. If you... So that's why I'm actually surprised he was willing to do this because as soon as you pressure Phil about a question, even if it's yeah. something basic like, hey, Phil, why do AMD, why'd you say AMD processors overheat? He'll usually just block you and run away. So that's why everyone's so shocked by what you're saying. I want an MTV Comedy Central style movie about Dave's childhood. The kid actor would have the hairline, snorts, crooked Joe, and the smugness after he makes a pointless point. Oh, and Wolverine. Yeah, but the downside of this is that the kid actor is going to be not finding any more jobs ever. And they're probably going to get bullied for life because it's going to be all, oh my god, is that the kid that played DSP in the Comedy Central fucking TV show? Oh my god, look at him. He's not a very... Yeah. He doesn't like any kind of... of not feedback or anyone who doesn't agree with phil he considers it like an attack 
usually. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I can see from an online perspective, but, you know, in person and uh, uh, on video chats, he's, it's been pretty uh, rational back and forth and, and pretty, you know, mm-hmm. I, I don't like working with, you know, the insane and people that are going to make my life miserable. Uh, he, he, he's so far been pr- pretty straightforward with me and we've, we've just kind of been able to get going, but we haven't filmed yet. So uh, yeah, this is a little premature. I didn't even plan on it, giving all this, uh, giving all this well that's uh, why i made sure to tell you that i was like i was like i'll pick up because i want to talk to you but i was like yeah i'm in the middle of a stream so i don't want you to say anything you didn't want to say if i didn't say this and i was like oh well i can't talk about it you know i I probably could have done that but hey it is what it is like we're, we're doing it but yeah man i will definitely hit you up throw some dates out there to do your interview and we pretty much just talk about your your whole opinion and thoughts and like also you this about. you said phil, phil is a phil is a good voice does this voice change in person oh no no it, it, this is a this yeah you is get true. the you get uh, you get the baby talk phil uh, the way he talks to jasper or cat that's how he's going to be in the documentary but look from dsp's per- perspective this is very encouraging because the guy went on a detractor show and said a bunch of nice things about him which reinforces that DSP should feel secure about this, you know. I sh- I should do it, you guys. This is this is for real, you know. This is this is gonna be good for me. And if something bad happens, all the toxicity is gonna go to Mike's direction because he's the guy making the documentary. And if something good happens, it's gonna be the the benefit of Phil. That's from his perspective. So the more confident he feels about this, the more he's willing to disclose about his life. And possibly, if he feels comfortably enough. We might just see the snort for it if there is even an in-person type of scenario. But seeing how Mike offered to go and talk to Rich in person, I don't see why he wouldn't do it. But there now Phil. to run or to do, and his pool of dents is shrinking fast. I think it's a last-ditch attempt to save the house. Oh yeah, I mean it's a it's one of the last-ditch attempts of uh, just getting back to prominence. You know, clearing his name. That's what he wants. Clearing his name, because like I said. Boogie owns up to a bunch of the toxic bullshit, and DSP just pretends that he is because it's it's the the smart thing to say is that he's sorry. He's not really fucking sorry. He hasn't really changed, but it's the smart thing to say that he has. Voice. This is the true voice of electricity. Oh, because to me, he, so- that, he, he sounds like I a. The, I just think he sounds like a Bill, banshee mating. Elect- the true voice of electricity. That sounds nice. He described him like he's talking to the Rock, dude. The most electrifying streamer in the world. Oh, you said what? I think he sounds like a banshee mating. You know, <laughs> that's one way to put it. I think maybe that's electrically... what's electric about it. Maybe, but this is a pure entertainer. Okay, and definitely like any way this goes, uh, DSP is going to have a period of very high attention that is pointed to his direction. So he's going to get new people showing up. He's going to be getting like gift bombs and making a lot of money. Anyway, this goes. If the documentary makes him look like a complete fucking idiot, because, I mean, he is, then still that's the case. People from there are going to show up and be hyped about it. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I forgot to say this. Greedo the Green, shout out to you, dude, for the last Super Chat for the 20. Big ups. Because, you know, desperate boys do desperate things, and this seems like a kind of a desperate thing to do. And of course you have Boogie in the mix, and DSP really wants to make a documentary that is better than Boogie's, because happy he feels like he's better than you. Uh, big ups, Burgers, for the Happy New Year. Hope you have a good one, dude. Hope you have a, a year full of jolly excitement and um, positivity or something. I hate him. You're listening. I, you know so what? I that- listen, man. I'm also an open-minded dude. I will go into this with an open mind. Uh, like I said, I, even though I know Phil considers me a hater and detractor, quote-unquote, I also, my audience knows that when I'm like, hey, Phil's actually right about that. So I'm not, I don't just look to shoot it like, you know, you know, not punch down. I hate that term, but I'm not just like looking for the negative. So yeah, you know, I'll, I'll well, maybe I need to license some of your beats for the, for the film as some of the background music, you know, we can, we can, hey, come you. on, come on. I'm right here. I'm right here. You don't even need to license them. It's free real estate. Come on. Not even going to strike you as one of the music producers until i see the documentary know, that is let's talk about that come on yeah we do <laughs> listen phil is uh phil phil knows about beats so oh well 
There you go. <laughs> let's let's hear the beats he knows about. With the soul. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Definitely, he he definitely knows what's up because this is an instant classic. Oh. Anyways, uh, Rich, good to chat, and I will definitely be in touch with some dates and. Uh, Hopefully, it will be fun. All right. Yeah, Mike, I'm looking forward to talking to you, and I'm 100% down, man. Thank you so much for being on the awesome, show as well. Man. Yes, later. Later. Bye. Bye. And, yeah, I guess that's it. If he's trying to get the, the pork nice and buttered up, it's probably going to work because DSP is really easy to get Mike into. I understand buttering to make him feel good and safe to do the Donacon, but he's laying it way too thick. Well... I, I would prefer him to be silent until the documentary actually comes out so he doesn't give anybody too much hope or he doesn't scare DSP out of it because you know how these things go. Remember when DSP was supposed to show to, up to the Drunken Peasants podcast, which is literally just like a couple of dudes that get high and watch some lol cows or other bullshit and he pussied out because things didn't go his way or he thought it was going to be a trap or his trolls are going to be there. This was like a, a long time ago. So... Uh, we never know, you know? You never know what's going to happen. We're going to watch the Phil today because he has a big announcement on the podcast. Speaking of big announcements, he also has a new, uh, extremely awesome channel that definitely is new. Um, KO Gaming 1. Can I find it like that? Of course I can. And then the first thing that comes up is my stream from like two years ago. God damn it. And uh, the channel is called DSP Throwback. I think we might even get time to actually watch this official launch video that was released a day ago. But notice this, my fellow Americans. Notice this. What is recommended for you? This is for me. This is curated fucking content. I have to curate my content that I watch. We got for you, we got DSP Gaming Emergency Livestream Part 1. Super hype. We got Part 2 because uh, we need to go through the whole series. Then we got Part 3. And then we got a, a nice positive log that is only four minutes long. And then we have some reviews and alert. Alert, but the alert is that he's actually back. So it's a positive style alert. So, uh, yeah, you probably know about this. This is a channel that is about to be rebranded that has this avatar. And this might be the worst graphic design I've seen in my life. Um, I absolutely mean it. I absolutely 1000% mean it. This is probably the worst logo to ever be made because it legitimately looks like something from 2010, which is thematic because the channel is about stuff that came out in 2010. But then again, it didn't need to be that bad. You got the nice leathery texture on the, the lower half of this circle here that makes you feel like you're sitting on a casting couch. You got the nice red DSP that is just completely red for some reason. And I mean, just look at it. Just look at it, guys. What else do I need to say? Looks terrible. Uh, and of course, we got a banner that you can see that at the top. Um, absolutely no consistency. So if you call that a rebranding, I'm, I'm going to just call it like, bullshit, I guess. It's, it's just stupid. So this is the channel where he's going to be uploading a bunch of his old shit that is AI upscaled. So it's going to be extra pixelated and stretched out in a higher definition. And it's going to have dog shit audio quality because, of course, it's stuff from like 10 years ago. Maybe even 15 years ago at this point. So yeah, let's see what he has to say about it. How y'all doing? If you're still subscribed to this channel in 2024... He's wearing that nice medieval peasant top that makes him look like a medieval peasant. Hey, by the way, he, he was cross-dressing a couple of, couple of days ago. God damn it. I, I can't find this right now, but I saw it. Uh, people were posting this shit like it was the plague on Twitter. Because uh, he bought a top, like a nice white, I don't know, cardigan, that people later out found out that it's actually a female-style cardigan. And, I mean, come on. I mean, come on. It was fucking ridiculous. Or you're probably shocked to see a new video, aren't you? It's actually the end of January 1st, 2024, and here I am, Dark Side Phil, making a video on KO Gaming. But what you might notice is that this channel isn't KO Gaming anymore because, ladies and gentlemen... Whoa, I've you changed the name. ...defunct for five and a half years, completely unused and just sitting here. Finally, 
Let me see I'm if I can find that card again, man. That shit is fucking terrible. Going to use it for something oh, completely right. different. His wife's BF got his wife Preg as the announcement. Hey, no spoilers. No spoilers. Come on. Plus, he has trolls, dude. Obviously, he, he can't have children. Because trolls. So, I guess Tyrone needs to pr protect his son. Project that I'm calling DSP throwback. Allow DSP video throwback. To be an explanation of what this is going oh, yeah, to be. Oh, yeah, it's called DSP throwback because DSP classics was taken. Somebody took the, the, the tag. So he couldn't actually do that. So now it's called DSP throwback. <laughs> I have now oh been my a God. on the internet for 15 years and All climbing. Right. And in that 15 years, I have changed and evolved many different times from being someone who just had a camera pointed at a TV, doing this improv, very irreverent, very immature commentary. Oh, yeah. Another piece of uh, clothing that he wore recently was this. Which, I mean, like, what, what the hell? What the hell? What the hell, boy? He's looking like a GTA Online character. This is so random for him. But then again, like, what does he even wear that makes him look good? I, I don't know. I don't even know. <sighs> Gameplay. Basically trying to appeal to... Oh, we got another... Boy. Yeah, okay. Okay, we, we need to go through a bunch of the new outfits. Because, man, these are rough. So we got this one. Uh, think Auschwitz in the Milan fashion show. That's, that's what he's serving. He's serving Auschwitz. It's fantastic, if you ask me. I mean, it, I think it's a pretty bold statement. A uh, pretty good artistic direction right here. And in this one, he is also doing a very signature pose. Uh, of that time. So you can say he pretty accurately encapsulates the time. Fantastic. Teenagers. Uh, and turning that into something... Okay, so this is the card again. Never, ever this is it. Right? Then, eventually, d adopting direct capture and... <laughs> and this, I mean, it speaks for itself. It's definitely not suitable for whatever he's trying to get. And it definitely makes him look feminine. And you know, as a as a punk ass sissified boy, I don't mind it. But this is a dude that uh, is very he is very assertive of his masculinity. You know, he's not he's none of those sissified boys or effeminate men. Nah. Live streaming first, kind of ignoring the live streaming audience, and then deciding to actually work on this very channel called Ko Gaming when it was first in. Uh, oh, and we're still talking about like 15 years ago. Splitting my time between live raw gameplay streams and blah blah blah. Edited. Uh, you know, like 2021, I've been over there full time all day, every day, six days a week. All these streams, and I've actually diversified my content as well. I do a podcast every single morning called the Level One Podcast. I stream. Two That's a bad thing. Streams a day. I have a React channel now called DSP Reacts. You might be able to see that in the related channels below. Uh, where once a week I do a big react show to clips that members submit and we do all kinds of fun stuff over there. So I have changed a lot in my time on YouTube. And this channel is just sitting here not being used. If you're one of the 20,000 people who at this moment are still subscribed to the channel, thanks for sticking in there. You didn't have to, but I appreciate you still leaving this in your sub feed. So now <laughs> what are the comments though? The comments are you should upload your own kind montage videos on here. Blah, blah, blah. Hopefully, you'll keep your reviews up on this channel. Yeah, nothing's getting deleted. The old content will not be removed. Of course not, because then it's going to destroy him in the algorithm. So all those begging videos, alert videos, all those great videos that YouTube suggests to me because they love me so much, like these ones, they're going to stay, you guys. We get to enjoy them until the end of time, which is super positive. He's saying, what on earth is going on? Phil's uploading to this channel again. Yes, but it's not the content that I used to do. This channel is now going to be called DSP Throwback. And this channel's primary focus is going to be lost media. Back in lost the day, media. when I used to have that camera pointed at a TV, I uploaded insane amounts of gameplay to my old channels, Dark Side Phil and DSP Gaming. But in addition to that, there were other playthroughs that I was afraid to upload to those channels because there were certain game developers that eh, you would be a little worried that maybe they would hit you with a copyright strike. This was way before the era of being even able to monetize. Oh, by the way, I forgot to show you the disclaimer. We got a nice juicy disclaimer right here. Uh, where was the disclaimer, dude? Was it here? 
Oh yes, any content found on this channel is legacy content that is likely over a decade old. It is not representative of the current values, beliefs, or content that Darkseid Phil makes on his other channels. Enjoy this view into the past of YouTube. Yeah, so that's, uh, that's what he says when he refuses to edit out the slurs. That's what he says. Oh my god, this channel is gonna be such a fucking disaster. Such a disaster, it's gonna be so bad. ...videos on YouTube. And oh so there man. ...playthroughs such as... Because he's gonna be begging heavy for people to swing by because the videos, they get like... They get not suitable for monetization, guys, because he said some words that were okay 10 years ago. So make sure to become a member over on DSP Throwback. Red Dead Redemption and its DLC, Undead Nightmare, and some online sessions that I did with friends called Suicide Kings. Oh, no. There's also the L.A. Noir playthrough from Rockstar that originally I played, and also my classic Final Fantasy XIII playthrough. Those games were played on separate YouTube channels from my main ones, just in case any copyright issues arose. Well, the problem is, there were no copyright issues, but the channels got hacked. And they were shut down because the hackers started broadcasting illegal sports on those channels. <laughs> I had no way to regain the control. This is the most DSP thing to happen, dude. And YouTube closed them. So I've had these <laughs> legacy playthroughs from 10 to 13 years ago. In fact, I think the Final Fantasy 14 or 13 one is like 14 years old. Yeah, they were streaming illegal sports like dog fights and stuff. And bum fights. <laughs> uh, these playthroughs have just <laughs> illegal streams of illegal sports. Just sat around completely unwatchable. And it was last year I went into my closet, dug into my hard drive archives because I actually. The hard drive archives is what he calls a pile of old hard drives. Yeah, I can see he's going live, but it's still the intro. Save all my old videos on hard Unless drives, he does the cold open again, then I'm going to miss it. This amount of lost media. Not only those playthroughs I just mentioned, but unknown playthroughs like. Kung Fu Panda and Dante's Inferno. I never finished them, but they're a legacy okay. content from. I'm I'm sure there's a ton of a a ton of people asking for them, day and night. People are waiting in the wings for those, and I can't wait for the comments of people saying, "Hey Phil, I liked you way back, back in the day when you played the Final Fantasy 13, because you were saying the cool stuff, and now you're just so fucking sanitized." I I love those comments. I can't wait for them. For a decade ago that people might be interested in watching. I found a ton of vlogging stuff that used to be on my old vlogging channel that's now impossible to watch. So all this lost media has been sitting around and for years people have been asking me, will you ever re-upload it? Now is the time. But I don't want you to worry. And also he's not doing any of the work. He's just sending the source files to somebody else and they're actually editing them together. Just, just so you get a perspective of this dude talking about this shit for 10 minutes. Um, yeah, he's not doing almost any of the work. He's just collecting all the revenue, and literally everything positive that happens is, it goes to him. And everything negative that happens is not his fault. We are not going back in time. We are moving forward. We're steadily. moving forward, you guys. So this is live. It is my final consecutive streaming day of the week. I'm DSP, of course, and I welcome you here to stream. I hope that you're all doing well, and... Okay. Super hot take. This shirt is not bad. Today, I will address the rumors and all the happenings that have been going on. Uh, basically, yesterday, all during the course of the day, people kept coming to my stream saying, Hey, Phil, I heard this. Hey, Phil, I, I heard that. And uh, we haven't heard anything from you. So can we hear from you on this particular topic of what we're hearing about? To which I responded, No. You cannot hear from me because yesterday I was busy. You know, we had a new playthrough to do in Resident Evil Zero Remastered that just premiered. Um, and we had to finish up Like a Dragon Gaiden, right? So I was very busy yesterday and I was like, I can't be derailing all of my content um, in order to talk about this particular topic. I have a show that I do every day. I'm not sure if you're aware. It's called the Level One Podcast and on said podcast, of course. I address stuff. Kind of, of course, like we need to have it during the state of the stream, so <clears throat> we can't announce anything else because now he need he's gonna be sitting on this shit for like twenty minutes to get a bunch of people showing up because the title says big announcement. And so today, that is really going to be one of the major focuses of the show, although not the only focus. Yeah, I'd like to talk about how things went with the premiere of Resident Evil Zero yesterday, the conclusion of of Like a Dragon Gaiden, which was very actually very emotional, surprisingly, um, 
and how this is now going to affect the schedule because we wrapped up that game. It means that we have more time for other stuff. Um, and that's going to be really cool. All right. But, you know, obviously people want to hear from me about a particular topic, which I will address on today's show in as much detail as I can because here's the thing. Number one, I don't want to spill the beans and completely spoil everything. And number two, I'm legally bound. There's actually a lawyer. He's sitting in my closet right now. I'm serious. Oh, wow. And we get a great comedic segment. Me for everything that I say. And if I say something wrong, he's going to come out here and he's going to beat me on the head with a ruler and say, you're going right to a nice lawsuit, buddy. I'm just kidding, obviously. It's not, it's not all that serious at all. I'm just joking. Please don't take this serious. I'm trying to be silly. And there'll be people who'll be like, what? Phil's being uh, sued and he's a... No. This is one of the stupidest joke segments because it's a obviously a joke, and then he needs to tell people, "Hey, you guys, I'm joking. Don't take it seriously." Absolutely not. I'm just being. You know, <laughs> why? Being why the fuck here. would you do anyway, that? <clears throat> tell him to come out of the closet. Actually, the lawyer told me he loves being in the closet. There you and go. If he was outed. That it might change his life, and he doesn't want to do this. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. <clears throat> This is that electrifying show, level one uh, experience. My final st streaming day of the week. It's been a great week, right? Um, over the course of this week, way more Baldur's Gate 3. Um, meaning probably just once a week moving forward for the rest of this week. Oh, he's still playing Baldur's Gate out. 3? And God damn it. Sea of Stars, which I'm actually really, really excited to play more Sea of Stars later tonight on the late stream and to play more of it in the regular schedule. Now that we've wrapped up the lingering playthroughs, we could do that, you see? <clears throat> so... I am excited for the content that's now going to be coming out for the rest of the month. You know, for three weeks or so, we'll be juggling exciting games, right? Until the new releases actually start hitting in late January. And the good thing is, I don't think that these oh, three man. weeks yep. leading up to the end of the month uh, are going to be... I, I regret to say that I think I might have been right. And first, he's going to let everybody suffer through... The stupid fucking nonsense schedule bullshit with video games... In summarizing yesterday's stream and summarizing the stream before that and summarizing the stream before that until we get to the thing that people actually showed up for because he loves attention so much. This is how much he loves it. Typically, we gotta waste everybody's time. Right? If you look at my history, it was like first it was Fallout New Vegas, then it was Skyrim, then it was Oblivion. Well, this year we're playing Baldur's Gate 3. A little different because it's a hot new release, right? Game of the Year winner. So it was a hot new release like six months ago. Pretty exciting. Um, although, admittedly, you may have noticed something in regards to Baldur's Gate 3. The attendance is way lower now. Uh-oh. And the viewership on YouTube is way lower now. It just is. Which is I it? knew would happen. We're Let's check it out. Let's fact check Baldur's real Gate quick. 3. <clears throat> and did you really think that for a slow bait, slow paced, excuse me, a slow paced... Oh, yeah. This shit got, like, based, less than 500 narrative views. Narrative-based RPG yeah. that we were going to retain sky-high numbers. And I never thought we would. I told you this. I told you as much when we started this playthrough that I didn't really feel like it was going to be retained, and I was right. Now, it took a little longer than maybe I had expected, but at the same time, here's the good news. People are still engaging with the playthrough, meaning when I'm playing the game, people are showing up to the streams, hanging out with me, helping me to understand the mechanics. There's still mechanics 30 hours in that I'm still, like, not exactly understanding. <clears throat> and you guys are helping me to find all of the content in the game which is great i don't want to miss out on any content in this game um, oh so he's gonna 100 percent it huh appreciate that. wow but, he loves it now but yeah i mean what a decline for give, to give you a perfect example when i started playing the game every part was getting thousands of views but right every stream okay was okay okay again phil being phil i thought he plays the game because people show up and support. Why do we have to cry about the views? Why do we have to complain about YouTube views and fucking uh, video on demand views? We still fucking care about that? He makes like 400 views a video. Getting like Come on. 500, 600 viewers. Now we can't just focus on the positive and play it off as this positive thing people show up and enjoy and they raise fucking money for it and they tip him and shit like that. No, we got to focus on the negative first. And the positive comes, like, just, just as a afterthought. These parts barely get 300 views. After days, I mean, the, the video's now been live since Monday. 
they're like 300 views. You know what I mean? So it's just like every RPG. It really. I also uh, saw that he was uh, safe scumming a bunch. I I can't confirm it because I don't watch his stuff, but I saw on Twitter some clips of him sca safe scumming like a bitch. It is. If this were like Dark Souls or something, so I'm not it'd surprised. Be really different, but RPGs sadly don't retain as much of an audience like I, like I would hope. I love RPGs. RPGs are my forte, right? Like I've played a zillion of them. I love them. I thought fighting I games were your forte. Them. If I could actually have a bigger audience for them, but for whatever reason, uh, <clears throat> the RPGs, case in point, Baldur's Gate 3, the game of the year RPG, even that, 30 hours in, does not retain a very large audience, okay? But the good news is I'm still enjoying myself. It's not like the playthrough's worse or anything. We're still having a great time. Every time I play it, I'm having a good time. People are supporting the streams, which is great. So don't worry about that. Seems like That's you're worried about deal. it. It's not like, oh, because the viewership is dwindled, the playthrough is suffering. It's not. I say it's still really, really good, and I'm excited every time that I play it today. We're playing it, and you know, I'm like, yes, we're going to finish the Goblin Camp and all of that, okay? But it's basically, you know, it's declined to the point where I knew it would, you know? Um, but anyway, so good stuff. You know, wrapping up all the lingering playthroughs from 2023, now we're heading full force into the playthroughs for 2024, um, you know, everything refreshed for the new year this week, right? The new background, the new animations. You guys are giving me very positive feedback. You're really liking the new animations on the streams. Uh, there's three redoes. And some people might say, well, I wonder, how's that going? Um, I'll give you a quick update because I don't have too much of a crazy update. Yeah, we're talking about um, DSP Classics right now. That, Excuse me, I mean DSP Throwback because DSP Classics was taken. The Final Fantasy 13 playthrough is going to be the first one. Just so everybody knows, because there's other playthroughs. There's Red Dead Redemption, um, and it's expansions and online play. There's L.A. Noir, and there's other lost stuff. But it's going to be Final Fantasy 13 that goes up there first, okay? And already I can tell you, I've probably got four to five hours of footage uh, that's been uploaded and ready to go. And basically, as I said, it's not just me working on this. It's multiple people. Multiple people. people He's got fucking slaves editing videos for him. Which, like, when you think about it, it's kind of fucking impressive. To be someone who presents himself as such a helpless piece of shit that you get people working for you for free. ...on taking those videos... It's crazy. ...running them through... I kind of respect them for being that exploitative. ...upscalers and everything, and then editing... You should work at Amazon. And, ...and seeing, you know, how it looks, and also thumbnails and everything. You know, it's gonna be... Uh, good quality stuff this time around. <clears throat> They're working on that. <clears throat> I've been told, and this is not a promise, likely by Friday-ish, we should have the first video ready. It'll be part one of Final Fantasy XIII uh, with the improvements, and I'm curious what you guys will think. Uh, I don't know. I haven't seen it. It's with the improvements. You know, I, I don't know yet. Um, but well, what do you, what do you mean? He, he said there was a couple of videos uploaded already, and he doesn't, he hasn't even seen it? Curious. You know, will he can't even hype up his own product because he doesn't consume it? Like, oh yeah, this is giving me a lot of confidence in your new project, Phil. You're supposed to say that it's much better than before. You're supposed to say that it's fucking great and everybody's gonna love it. If you like the old DSP stuff, man, this is remastered with better audio quality, with better video quality. You guys are gonna love it. People, watch but no, instead we get. Well, I I don't know. It I don't know. Well, I mean, like, I guess we'll see. Somebody else is doing it, so no skin off my back. Blech. Watch this old playthrough in 2024 with these improvements. People have been asking for this for ages. Where is the playthrough? Why, you know, people have asked me to replay Final Fantasy 13, which I totally am okay with doing. But it seems like every time that we talk oh, about it, there's a... He acts like it's only BG3 that doesn't get any views. It's every single game he plays. That is true, but Baldur's Gate 3 was supposed to be the super mega hyped game, right? He played it because of that, and he hyped it up to no end for, like, months. So you, you kind of expect him to have higher expectations for that to perform. But I, I understand what you mean. Another big RPG out, right? You know, right now... It's Baldur's Gate 3, then we're going to have like uh, Cope Side Phil for the Final five. Fantasy 7 Rebirth. It's like, when am I going to play Final Fantasy 13? It's not going to happen, right? You know, eventually maybe, but not right now. So, uh, I'm totally excited. Oh, yeah, that, that's, a, that's, a, that's a good point. What is his part in the new channel? Well, he uploaded the avatar that somebody else made very poorly. He is collecting all the revenue off of the entire channel, whatever might come his way. And it has his name on it. And it's him playing games from a long time ago. But I also don't want to get everyone overexcited 
Um, especially because I can't promise you a delivery date. You know what I mean? Like, it might be coming um, at... It might be coming at the end of this week or might not. Okay, we'll see. We'll play it by ear. We'll see uh, exactly what... Uh, you know, what happens with it, and I'll give you updates when I have updates, all right? So that is in process. DSP Throwback, by the way, that announcement video that I uploaded over there, over 2,000 views and climbing now. <laughs> um, people have actually casually watched a few of the videos <laughs> oh my that were gosh. already on that channel. From like what, the emergency? 2000, like 2018. Come on, when dude. I was uploading some gameplay in over climbing. there. climbing. Um, 2,000 million views, dude. I don't know if anyone has actually watched the edited content. I mean, that was just the point of that channel originally was the edited reviews and things. And, uh, you know, it's ancient now. I mean, now you're talking videos that are eight plus years old. But <clears throat> basically, that channel, once I get videos on it, I need to get three uploads and I need to get consistent views. Then I can repartner it. I think if you want a quick um, game, I guess, that you can play in your head, start noticing the things that are different ever since Mike Klum announced he's doing a documentary. Because now Phil is on his best behavior, allegedly, because, you know, this is, is all going to be watched by Mike in, in his mind. So try noticing the new things. Is he wearing the jammies today, or is he wearing professional business-style pants? In which case, then I can... Is he going to wipe his earwax in his professional business-style pants or not? Big question. Eyes the content again. Place your bets. On the videos, etc. Um... In which case, it kind of makes all this effort worth I think it, uh, the right? phrase mouth drooling idiot is going to be lost somewhere. He's going to forget about it and not say it for some reason. Now it's really just for the sake of posterity, trying to get these videos back up in a way you guys can watch them. Um, but I think ultimately it may pay off, you know, we'll see. But anyway, that's the update on that. I don't have any more big uh, information. You can check it out at YouTube. Consider subscribing to the where it needs to be so that I can get into the partner program again. Oops, okay. there we go. Not representative of the content that's going to be on there now, yep. but it helps. Like, that viewing hours will help that channel <laughs> get boosted back to where it's Oh, this scum so fuck. The partner program again. This scum lord. We need to get back into prominence, dude. I mean, the partnership program. Basically, if you have a defunct channel, they, they don't keep it partnered. They'll unpartner it, and then when you re-qualify, they'll re-partner the channel. Yeah, so, so keep all, watching. I wasn't using keep watching. It. Go watch all the emergency videos. Getting any views or uploads, and it unpartnered automatically. Now I can get it repartnered automatically once it hits the criteria again. Yeah, okay? but isn't this... Hold on. Isn't telling people to go watch your videos so you can get partnered... Isn't that against terms of service? Because that kind of seems like an inorganic views you know because views are supposed to be organic somebody's supposed to click on a video because they're interested in watching it not because somebody told them the owner of the channel told them to go and watch his video so he can get partnered again cool all right so ladies and gentlemen obviously i like to talk about the schedule and then i want to talk about the big thing you're all here to hear about right the big announcement yeah, but first we're gonna do the schedule that i have for you because DSP throwback is just one of many things many. coming in 2024 that Thousands. are new, uh, big announcements and things that are going to be cool and shake things up a bit, all right? So I have a big one to talk about today. People have already heard rumblings. People have already heard information about it elsewhere, and now they want to get the skinny from me, and you're going to get it. But first, let's quickly go through the schedule. Yep. <laughs> all right. Um, so Bro, what, what do you mean next. rumblings? The guy literally came out and declared, I am making a documentary on Phil. I've spoken with him multiple times. What is the rumblings? He's talking about it like we're about to hear this thing for the first time ever. So let's skip as much as humanly possible. Advice or help with sniping or something like that. And he's cool. sniping right now. Um, <clears throat> so then uh, Friday... It's going to be more Baldur's Gate 3, and it's Friday Night Fights, the one day a week that I'm going to play Street Fighter. Oh, we're still on Friday. Earlier in the week. I'm only what do we got Street left? Fighters we got Saturday and Sunday, but when is he doing his stupid Game of the Year awards? So inputs for me to way later than everybody else, of course. Really oh, wait, 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 it's Street Fighter. It wasn't like that until yep. I hit Master. Oh, and yes. Master, the Street Fighter has now joined literally every fighting game ever as being a laggy piece of shit where everybody cheats unless you get the ideal utopian setup which is i guess a pc uh, which he happens to not have what a con coincidence actions just aren't as good as they used to be i think it's because there's fewer players in master so you have a smaller player pool and you end up having worse connections no matter what plus the vast majority of people i play in master 
are playing crossplay on PC. Oh, shout out to Piece of Peace, by the way, who bodied him again. And PC just has this big advantage over console. It's just not fair. It's really reduced my enjoyment of the game, which sucks because I think the game is great and it is the best fighting game experience out there. It just sucks that they didn't find this real solution to the problem when you hit that level. What's weird is no other fighting games ever faced this before because no other fighting games had this good... Yeah, we're not talking... People in chat, start, stop bringing up when he lost. We're only talking about it when he won. Hey, what's up, Mike Klum? Would I like to be in the documentary? I guess... I don't know. Now, now that you're asking me, maybe I do. Maybe I do. Maybe you can use my music if you want some, some royalty-free tracks for, for your documentary, dude. You know what? Maybe I wanna. I don't know, man. Why not? Neko. I, I, I wasn't intending on it, but maybe we can have a talk. I don't know. So because of that, no, every other fighting game is way laggier. So you don't even get to this point where you hit the wall and you realize connections aren't as good because they're always bad, right? So in this game, it's, it's a problem that's good to have, but it's still a problem, right? <clears throat> So anyway, only one uh, stream of that this week, Friday night. I don't even know who I'm going to use. It might be Dalsim. It might be Blanca. I might even try Honda again. I don't know. We'll see. Um, then on Saturday, okay, it's going to be more Resident Evil Zero Remastered, which I started yesterday, which was super good. Um, in a nutshell, it's classic survival horror in a smaller, different setting in the intro on the train. But once you're off the train, you get to another mansion, and now you're just playing Resident Evil again. Like, it feels like I'm playing classic Resident Evil, which I love, you know. Oh, so when are we going to get to the hype reveal, dude? Basically, Saturday and the Saturday night. What is he peeling off stars, from his eyebrows? Like Dragon Gaiden yesterday, which I'm going to talk about in a moment, oh, by the way. We're getting a full-on facial treatment today. It's not just the ears that are getting picked. We got a nose pick. We got some eyebrow touches. You need to get nice and beautiful for that documentary, Mr. Burnell. Great playthrough so far. Really enjoyed it. He's going to get a nice facial zoom in. Hope it's in like black and white. Maybe a four by three aspect ratio make it even more artistic. I would love to see that, dude. Yesterday, more of that coming Saturday. And then Saturday night, we're going to do more Sea of Stars because we finished Like a Dragon Gaiden yesterday, which I'm going to talk about in a moment, by the way. Extra time oh, no, let's night. not talk about it. It's over. You finished it. Why do we get to we talk about it? Tuesday of next week. Okay, so no stream on Sunday night. It's just going to be the React show. Uh, then Monday, it's more Baldur's Gate 3, and Monday night, it's going to be the most disappointing games of the year countdown, where for two hours, we go through every game that I felt had potential and was super disappointing in 2023. It should be a great countdown. It's usually everyone's favorite. Then on Tuesday, it's going to be more Resident Evil Zero Remastered, and it's going to be both your choice, the viewer's choice, best playthroughs of 2023, and my Game of the Year awards. Each will be about so Which day was long. that? Okay. Um, I completely so spaced out. It is official as Saturday? of last night. I created two polls for you. Oh, to now we get to go and look at polls. Of the year. In fact, the links just popped up. Oh, wow. They just popped the up. Right now. Oh, there we go. So if you have not seen those links yet, please. So we got the very go first one so is the viewer's choice best playthrough. So for some reason, but obviously, we have until um, next. Scorn is not on the list. You guys to vote. So but I think Scorn was not that year, huh? I'm getting vote. completely mixed uh, up. Alan Wake 2, Hogwarts Legacy, Grand Theft Auto 5, Street Fighter 6. I mean, I'll tell you right now. I guess Street Fighter 6, we got a bunch of fucking salt out of that. I'm going to vote for that. That's that's my take. And we got, apparently, Grand Theft Auto 5 is leading for some reason. I mean, you did. Just I, I don't even remember him playing the game. It as much what the as hell? So, and then we got the viewer's choice best playthrough of... Wait, what? And unalived. Oh, so there's two polls. Our thoughts are about and then we the got Elder Scrolls 4, Baldur's Gate 3, game. Tears of the Kingdom, Chrono Trigger, and Starfield. All shit playthroughs, by the way. So, and one of them is still going on. And but I, I gotta go with Baldur's Gate 3. Will be more gameplay or maybe Zelda, because people made fun of him on TikTok, there, and it right? really pissed him off. And, the and he was terrible. Gate 3, so, Zero, I don't know. Stars, I'm gonna click on Zelda, Fighter. even though Baldur's Gate 3, of course. Clearly. We'll see what we have winner. time for on the late streams, because we'll probably have one or two weeks left before we get to the new releases. What do you want to do? We could have open streams where we just do random stuff. We could have some special events. We could do a little mini game. You know, like people have t tossed out some indie games and stuff. We'll figure it out to balance with Sea of Stars on late streams. Okay? Cool. All right. So that's that. Now, a couple of quick things to talk about. People are, are wondering. Someone just literally just asked. So did he beat uh, Like a Dragon Gaiden last night? Yeah, he did. I did beat it last night. I stayed late to do it. Oh, he stayed late too. He put in some minutes. extra work. Um, I'll just say this because I don't want to spoil the ending. I did not do any more Coliseum. Basically, I had my fill after doing three, four hours of the Coliseum. I was like, this is ridiculous. It's too much of a grind. It's too much of a time waste. I just want to see how the game ends. So we did, and it was great, a great ending. 
Uh, but I'll tell you this. I was massively overleveled for the ending. And I'm playing it. I'm like, how is it that I'm literally destroying the ending of this game? Why did they want me to level up even more to finish the Colosseum? How did it even make sense? So basically, as I described already, when they made this game, you can tell the different groups of the dev team worked on different parts. One group worked on the Colosseum. Here we one got. Group worked on the story, we got project manager Deborah, Phil, the creative director of the game. He knows how everything Deborah works. Made sure that the two were in. The line. last time he actually worked at a company was like 2008, right? Or he got laid off in 2009, something like that. But still, it's just still the same thing, you know. You got your your gaming team, and then you got your story team, and you got the creative director, and he's telling him what to do. Phil knows yeah, all of this. I mean, come on. To, to he's an industry insider. Leveling, to the point where you're so overpowered, you don't need it for the story, and this, you just steamroll the rest of the story. It doesn't make sense. Like, why is it not in line? If anything, if you're doing the Colosseum, it should reward you and make the story easier, but not to the point where now you, like, fart and you kill entire groups of enemies. Like, literally, that's what it was. I was just completely steamrolling the end of the game. Like, the combat was a joke. Because some people were like, oh, it's going to take you two, three hours to beat, and it took me 90 minutes. And they're like, oh, it's because every fight, like, you just destroyed everyone with two hits. Like, yeah, because the Colosseum overleveled me. It was ridiculous. I don't, I don't understand why they didn't balance it. It just doesn't seem to make much sense, right? <clears throat> anyway, the ending was very emotional. Uh, I'm very so emotional. And I played this game because this is a perfect bridge. <laughs> what did, what, did he cry? Or Like a Dragon. And Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth, which we're playing in three weeks. If I didn't play this, this is a integral, important part of the story. Did he actually cry again? Dude, come on. What is happening with this dude? He cried like four times in the last year. That would have been missed. At, at like random things. You see? So I'm excited for Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth now. I'm like pumped for this game coming out later this month. And I'm happy that I played Like a Dragon Gaiden to bridge the two. And I want to say, if you didn't see the playthrough, please check it out. It's really good. The ending is Let's see if we saw the playthrough. Important. Without any spoilers at all, uh, it totally is worth the journey. Let's put it that way. The 30 plus hours wow. that I took to so, get there. So, totally hold on. All right. What? What is this discrepancy? What is happening here? What is this anomaly? So, episode 28 of this very playthrough has almost 300 views, which is, oh, wow. We're, we're making the numbers here, you guys. This one is going viral. But episode 29 is having 730 views. Like, what, what is the interesting thing that happened in this one that made it so viral, so watchable, so enjoyable? All right, guys. So, yes, the arena. Oh, yeah, it's because he clickbaited the title. Uh, the title is Big Frustration. Why did they make it like this? With Would three question marks. Page at Lords of the Fallen. Uh, yeah, I think he said he's not doing it. Because... Um, because he played Lies of P, and people generally didn't like Good Lords stuff. of the Fallen. So, so I yeah, guess he's not doing that, it. Which is great. It prepares us for everything to come, okay? Um, so I talked about... Let me think. I'm, I'm trying to check off in my head all the things I needed to talk about before we got to the topic at hand. So I talked about the new polls for uh, your favorite playthroughs of the year. I talked about the adjourning of... Or the conclusion of Like a Dragon Gaiden. I feel like there's one other thing that I wanted to talk about that I'm forgetting right now. And I hope that I don't for completely forget about it once I start talking about it. He's doing his best to avoid talking about the documentary until he's wasted as much of your time as possible. And he's gotten as many viewers as possible. Right now, he's at 575. But whenever he's, he starts talking about it, dude, everybody's going to show up. Okay. Um, covered the important stuff. And you guys are contributing. And I want to apologize. This is the second day in a row now that it's affecting me. So two days ago, I'm playing Baldur's Gate 3. And what happened now? The goblin camp, we're doing these big fights or whatever. We're five minutes until the end of the stream, and someone says, Phil, I sent you a big tip like an hour ago, and you never shouted it out. Did you get it? And I was like, oh, no, really? So I went and I checked, and it was there, but I never got a notification for it. Oh. So obviously, I felt awful because this is someone who should have not only gotten credit for their contribution, but we should have had like a reward tier awarded and everything, and we didn't get it. So yesterday I'm streaming Resident Evil Zero and all these contributions are coming in and I'm shouting them all out. And then like an hour later, someone says, Phil, did you get my tip an hour ago? You never shouted it out. And I look, it's not there. It's not in my notifications. I go check it. It's there. Sure. Why am I getting 
90% of the notifications and not all of them, I have no idea. It certainly sounds like an issue with PayPal because I check my emails and there's nothing wrong. There's no spam filter. They're not going to like a junk filter or anything. Why doesn't not he just have his PayPal open on his laptop and just refresh it every once in a while? Getting the emails. So it sounds like there's some kind of a weird disconnect uh, with PayPal and I can't make that work. This has happened before. But usually it's like something that'll happen for a day and then it fixes itself. This has now been going on for like a week where every day people are like, damn, Phil didn't shout out my, my contribution. I wonder what happened. Trust me, guys. It's not because I'm not grateful. It's not because I don't want to talk about, you know, whatever you're talking about. It's because I... Okay, let's skip to the present because I think he's about to start talking about it. ...doing... The thing, uh, dude, that nobody knows about and he's about to announce it. Nobody has heard about it, even though the guy making the documentary has announced it publicly multiple times. <clears throat> When people were basically doing um, a lot of nonsensical negative campaigns against me on the internet. Remember years ago? I okay, got, let's got go. Twitch partner program and stuff like that. They did the same thing everywhere. They did the same thing to Teespring, so I can't or make Or maybe sure. not. They did the same thing to Maybe this is just a, a preamble. what it is. They made an, a, literally they made a package of toxic stuff that I said 14 years ago. Really? You know, my original YouTube stuff from back in the day. Where I would say things that were could be considered. He was calling people a waste of life like two months ago, and was telling them that if they died, if if they were gone, excuse me, he didn't say died. If they were gone, nobody would care. And then he would transition into talking about talking about depression and how hard it affected him. Oh yes, that guy. Today, as either racist or bigoted or sexist, you know, and they took the worst of the worst and made a package of it and just sent it everywhere. Oh, this is the person that you have in your business right now, but it's. It's over a decade old. I don't do that stuff anymore. I've learned. I've apologized for that behavior. And yeah, but he's uploading those playthroughs on the DSP throwback channel now. Yeah, that's what's going to happen. That stuff from old Phil, the toxic piece of shit Phil that used to say all the slurs, he's uploading it and he's promoting it as this hot, amazing content. The mistakes of the past, right? But they act like that's what I did today. So all these businesses and services basically said, you can't use us anymore. So that's the thing, like, in regards to having automated pop-ups and automated tracking of things like tips and stuff, I can't even use it. I have to manually do it, which is fine, by the way. I'm okay with manually doing it because that ensures that I am giving credit where credit is due and every contribution gets shouted out. I'm not some ginormous streamer who's getting 5,000 contributions an hour and I can't shout them out, you know, with the level of that I have and the stature that I have, I'm totally good with manually shouting out every contribution that comes in. And in fact, I want to do it that way. So that's why there's no automation available um, with this kind of stuff. I just said. Okay, so there's no automation. The Wild West, nobody cared. There was no crowd micromanaging and judging every word that you say there was no cancel culture back then and people wanted that kind of content literally the audience actually there was cancel culture that's why he got canceled off of blip for the whole isaac heimler racism in space type of thing yeah people reported him and there were massive complaints about him which is pretty much getting canceled on YouTube. he got canceled in like what 2009 was that 2010 on blip tv not even on youtube to come on that. dude he got the the epitome of being canceled content which is a bunch of people make a big deal out of something that you said so the platform that you're on drops you he literally got canceled that's what they were looking for that's how i originally got popular because i was known as the irreverent guy who will just say it was 2010 it. there you go thank you without any checks right but now today i'm different i've changed i've matured um you know, but I fessed up to my mistakes of the past. And that's why I think it's unfair that I get judged in 2023, I guess now in 2024, for things I did 15 years ago as if that's something I did yesterday. You know what I mean? A completely different guy. I don't do that stuff anymore. I've changed everything. Yeah, you do a whole lot of new and innovative ways to be toxic to pretty much everybody. <sighs> Fantastic. There you go. Double M says, I saw your Revelations 1 playthrough. That was over a decade ago, right? This is the deal. Because the rumors have already hit the There internet. we go. There's Let's go. There's already rumblings. There's Let's already information it. out there. So I am here to basically clarify everything, to clear the air, and to let you know exactly what is going on. All right? Last year was a very drama-filled, nonsensical year for me. And he's already against bullshitting. Against my will and against my wishes. Correct? We, I think we can all agree. Last year, 
There was he a- said he's super proud of staying out of drama last year, by the way, multiple times. Multiple, multiple times he said that he's super proud that he stayed away from drama and everybody loved him for that. A lot of very negative talk about me on the internet, in some cases from really big YouTubers, right? Now, in some cases, being very transparent here, when I got criticized by Moist Critical and he was like, dude, I can't believe he's saying the things he's saying on his streams to his viewers about income and stuff like that. It seems very, you know, disrespectful. He doesn't seem like he has any gratitude. You know, you can't say that kind of stuff. That resonated with me. It struck a chord, correct? And I agree. No, incorrect. Watching myself- he kept begging like a bitch. A couple months later, he, he was back to begging. He even apologized for begging. You could probably find that on, on Pig Pig Go. Back. He apologized for falling back into his old ways, I believe was the correct quote. You know, this is from like the fall of 2022, okay? After watching myself back, <clears throat> that stuff, I was like, he's right. He's absolutely right. I sometimes get so full of, of, of emotion, whether it's fear, you know, because of finan finances. And oh, yeah, Mike, by the way, this segment is for you, dude. I don't know if you're still watching me or you might have been watching him, but this segment is for you. This is what you are supposed to hear. This is not for his fans or the trolls or anybody else. Stuff. This is his pitch to you. Like that. Or it could be many different And you kind of have to like it. Street Fighters, all these things. Whenever I get full of emotion, I tend to just go off the cuff and say things that I probably should not publicly say. You are 41 right? years old. Um, And I should be called out for it, rightfully. However, I felt that at that point, there were too many people who had only heard the negative and had no idea about the positive about me. You know, obviously, if I'm here after 15 years and I have a community who watches me every day, likes my content and supports it, I'm doing something right. All right? I wouldn't still be here if I wasn't doing something, right? There's people who are here. You can apply that same logic on objectively terrible people who have done horrific things throughout the entire human history. They had people that followed them and they, they left a like on their videos. For a good positive reason. And I felt like it wasn't fair because these big YouTubers who always name drop me never examined that half of it. They only examine the negative because that's what gets thrown in their face by the toxicity of YouTube. That's how YouTube works. Promote the toxic, push the negative forward, right? <clears throat> and so I, I said, if you're gonna talk bad about me, why not interview me, correct? Like, why not just talk to me directly? Because if I felt like if someone would just have a conversation with me to see that I'm a real guy, I'm not just some asshole who you see the negative highlights of, but I'm actually just a real person, Perhaps you'd think a little differently, all right? So I presented that to the internet, and basically, the only people who contacted me were drama brokers and people who were looking to boost their own presence on YouTube. Uh -huh. You know, it wasn't like a moist critical who reached out to me and said, yeah, let's do an interview. It was like, Review Tech USA, you know? Oh, let's do an interview. No, you already every day name drop me because you don't make your own content. You just make drama and you name drop me for drama purposes, you have no content of your own, I'm not going to give you more free content. You're out of your mind, you see? I wanted to have a real conversation with someone and it didn't happen, right? <clears throat> so then fast forward to March. And what happened was completely unrelated to anything in that realm of discussion, okay? Side Scrollers was a new podcast that was relaunching on the internet. It was a podcast that was run by Stuttering Craig, someone who in the past, over a decade ago, I had great dealings with. I had gone to a convention as a guest when I was at the height of my YouTube popularity, and it was his convention. He had me there as a guest. Before then, I'd actually- I'll replay this, this at, after at the a, segment. Another convention, MAGFest. Um, I was a fan of their website 15 years ago, ScrewTac.com and stuff like that. So he had reached out to me and said, hey, I know we haven't talked in years, but we're looking for guests for our show. And I said, I'll be a guest, why not? And I saw their show, and their show was a variety show. Well, ahem. their show was a variety show where they would talk about games and news. Now it's not anymore. Now they've actually used my interview as a platform to change their show and get popularity. But we'll talk about that later. Uh, Will so we? Oh, that's interesting. Why would you I, have I to talk about that? on your show. But then they completely changed the deal. The deal was originally, I'm just going to be a guest. We'll talk about a variety of topics. It'll be a fun show. Then it becomes, oh, well, what we want to do is we want to be the exclusive place for you to finally get that interview that you've always wanted. When did it become like that? The moment Craig announced they're having Phil on, and Craig didn't know shit about DSP. He just wanted to have him on to hang out and talk about video games. But then he got swarmed by a tidal wave of people. Just 
kind of letting him know the deal about DSP. And then it became something else, and Craig didn't know what to expect. And then he, he found out. Well, I didn't really always want an interview. I only wanted the interview because people were talking so negatively about me, right? So I was promised that this was going to be a fair interview where I was going to be able to say my piece about all this stuff that people say about me over the years. And then after the interview, basically, I was going to get to be a guest on the show. That I needed to get through this interview first, but once I did, I could be a, a guest. And it would be just like everyone else who had been on the show. At that point, for over a month, people had been guests on the show. No one else had to go through an interview, just me. Okay? So I do yes, this interview. Yes, because... Um, okay? I get paid nothing. They haven't... Oh, he got paid nothing. For this interview, for the record. It's just me giving them over five hours of my time. There Come you go. Oh, this... no. Mike, this is you in the future, dude. We got a time machine. This is you. Six months from now. Fair interview? No. All they had done was talk to all of my haters and detractors for, like, weeks. Go this script has flipped so many times. You don't even know what the official narrative is according to DSP, because first, the interview happened, he loved it, it was exactly what he thought it was going to be. It was exactly what he wanted, all along. It was perfect. So now, if you want to uh, answer for any of the questions you got, go check out that five-hour interview. A couple of months later, they tricked me. I was tricked. All of their negative side of the story literally never spoke to a single person about the positive side of things. There were none. They didn't come out. There were no DSP fans that reached out. All they did was research negative shit about me. And so they went into the interview with the mindset that they wanted to get me to confess to all these heinous things that I had done over the years. Wow, that's a great way to approach an interview, isn't it? They lied and told everyone that the next day after the interview, they were going to have a decompression show where they play games. And then they were going to have a follow-up interview with me later. None of that happened. After the interview... Instead, they did a, a hit piece on me. Basically, for a whole day, they just crapped on nope, me. Nope, nope. And made all negative... They just said their honest thoughts on what happened during those five hours. Because it's five hours of their time as well. And there's unprecedented levels of viewerships and super chats that they got that they couldn't cover. So they read out the super chats. And they were talking about how they felt during the interview. And coincidentally... They thought that he looked like a big fat liar because he acted like one and he definitely came across as one references and took in a ton of money thousands of dollars they received from okay i think they deserved it i think they did a great job actors and haters not only that day but they continued to milk this for weeks on end and months it was months later stuttering craig was trying to get me on the show or get onto my content right he wanted to play this is uh i i told craig personally when he was on our podcast i told him that that shit was a little bit hard to get through and the monetize the haters thing definitely didn't need to happen, but it got him butt hurt in crying about it, so I'm fine with it. Anything that gets him butt hurt in crying about it is cool. Street Fighter Six with me. For me. This guy would not stop. Basically, he saw me as a big cash cow, and he wanted to keep riding those coattails. Now, since that show, all right, <clears throat> they have basically gotten some notoriety in the conservative political community which is hilarious because when they started the show it, they always said there was not going to be about politics now the only attention they get is when they talk about politics and they've turned it into a right-wing political show that's their show now no it's uh, it's more of an anti-woke type of thing which I, I wouldn't necessarily call it right wing you don't have to be on one side of the spectrum to dislike the other side um all bolstered by when i was on it and by, by the way my interview continues to be the most watched thing they've ever done the funny part about it is the interview never actually did anything in the realm of what I wanted. The whole point of the interview that I wanted to do was that people who don't know about me can watch. Oh, and ironically, that's a good point, Crisis. He did have an interview with The Quartering, who does basically the same shit that they do now on the Side Scroller podcast. The interview, learn, and then there's no questions anymore about that stuff. In the end, all that interview ever did was it went around my detractor circles. That's it. It didn't actually hit mainstream. No one really cared about that interview outside of the detractors. So... It didn't really get to serve the purpose, but I'll say this, at the very least, basically all the bullshit about those, those negative things, those questions, those accusations, the conspiracies, it all went away. If you don't notice, no one really comes on my stream and talks about it anymore because I've already said my piece and I'm not wasting time anymore with that shit. I'm done with it. I told you guys, I'm done with those topics. We're done. You see? Right? So now he's setting this up for the documentary and when it happens, he will try to avoid those topics because they're done.
There's nothing more he can say about them, you guys. The topics that actually everybody cares about? No, they're done. They're finished. We're not talking about it, Mike. Or at least that's my guess. It so seems like he is, he is clearly setting something up here. Oh. By giving us all this context. After that. Because, like, for you to, to buy into the pignosis, you need to get the whole narrative, right? And he's giving you the whole narrative right now. Yeah. I made it my philosophy to stay out of drama. And I said, I'm not going to be doing any interviews. I'm not going to be doing any kind of anything with anyone. Even though people did reach out to me. Oh, I want to interview Phil and this or that. Even, what's his name? Mudahar or whatever. He reached out to me. Oh, I'm going to pay you $5,000 for an interview. And I said, I don't want your money. I'll do an interview, but we're not talking about this drama. I've already addressed So it. we're just going to talk about Street Fighter and video games. My time. If you want to have an intelligent <laughs> discussion about interesting topics. Who's going to agree to this, though? Who's going to agree to having a fucking interview with DSP where they talk about video games? That's like having an interview with Jeffrey Epstein and talking about financial investments. I'll do it. The moment you bring up drama, I'm gone. And then he ghosted me and never contacted me ever again. Because all these people want is drama. They don't actually want to talk about facts like fucking mature adults. All they want is milk drama so they can make money on YouTube. They're all fucking greedy. So anyway, anyway. I stayed out of it. Completely, 100%. And I didn't address any more of this bullshit for the rest of 2023. And things went smoothly. However, there was still... He didn't, yeah, he, he kept addressing it, by the way. There was a side-scroller segment basically every week. At least one where he would explicitly say the name side scrollers or sneak this without saying the name but we all know who he was talking about who tried to pull me in right these idiots trying to get me to go on a fucking podcast that i never was never involved in whatsoever and they lied about that and tried to make shit up and talking shit about me people making documentaries about me right which is hilarious the whole term documentary is hilarious because if all you do is research shit that's already on the internet and you regurgitate it into a two hour video and all you do is add a little bit of commentary, that's not a documentary. You've done, everyone else did work for you. All you did was regurgitate the, co the toxicity and the, and the conspiracy. You added really nothing besides a little bit of commentary on top. That's not a documentary. It doesn't even add anything. All it does is kind of summarize all the negative shit people have said. So with all that going on, right? People come, oh, will you, will you do an interview with the guy who did the documentary and this or that? And ultimately I said, no, I'm not doing any of that, right? I'm staying out. And the funny part is, someone actually asked me a question last year and it resonated with me. They said, you know, Phil, all these people on the internet are constantly talking negatively about you. Any of these people, do they ever actually like reach out to you to talk to you, right? Did they ever go to you for information or to get your side of the story or whatever? And I answered very honestly, no. Not once. In all this time, 15 years I've been on YouTube and all the negative videos and the documentaries and everything done, not once has anyone ever made a legit effort to get my actual side of anything. But here's the thing. His side is, is seen daily on his podcast. He gets to say his side every single day. He's got two hours a day separated for himself giving you his side of everything. Why would they have to actually go through that? You, we, we got it all on record. Instead, what, what else different is he going to say? It's always we believe all the toxic shit and just report the toxic shit and that's it. Even the side scrollers interview, which at first seemed like it was going to be neutral, was revealed to be an actual attempt to get me to basically fess up to shit I didn't do for their own purposes. They wanted to be the group to, oh my God, look, we did it. We got Dark Side Phil to spill the beans on everything and now we can be notable because of it and it didn't work. Um, it absolutely worked. And just because he didn't admit to the things that make him obviously guilty, does it mean that the bottom line has been made, right? Because he just looked like he was lying and he was bullshitting. So I guess he did spill the beans in a way. Because it's not, the shit they were trying to get me to do wasn't true to begin with. Right. So obviously it never was going to work. These people were fucked up, all right? <laughs> so basically, I stayed out of all of this all year. But, all right, always in the back of my head, I'm, I'm always wondering, and I've told you guys this too, I don't think anyone's ever going to give me a fair shake on the internet. I just don't believe it. It seems like everyone is out for the drama. Everyone's out for personal gain. What's better? To completely spin something in a way 
that makes me look horrible for clickbait views that will benefit you or to actually show me in a fair light. I'm not even saying show me in a positive light. I'm saying show me in a fair light to actually have another side of the story, to see what it's actually like from my perspective, to go through this, to live through all of this slander and nonsense that's happened to me for all these years, to just be a guy trying to get by with my community and having a good time and ignoring all the bullshit and then having to hear that constantly this stuff is going on outside, right? This is a so, great segment. And we haven't even got to the actual announcement. He is weaving the plot threads right now. Really? We're getting there. All right. I got contacted by someone who is a neutral party. Someone who does not stand to benefit by actually portraying me in an incredibly negative way because it wouldn't, it wouldn't, it basically, let me put it this way. If you're someone who wants to actually make real content, if you're not someone who's a drama hound, if you're not someone who is, uh, again, a keem star, a review tech, someone who all of your content is based on making someone look bad, correct? That is a good point, Amron. This is the exact same thing he said about the side scrollers, that they had no bias. They were just like reaching out to give them a fair shake. How many times did we hear the term fair shake? when that shit was happening. If you're someone who actually wants to make legit content. He was a averaging like triple double numbers of fair shake. Exactly the same thing happened, exactly. Then you actually have to be fair because the moment that you're not, who else would ever want to work with you again, right? If someone, if you portray someone in an unfair way that makes them look awful, then no one else is ever going to want to work with you either. You understand? It has to be some way where you're actually being fair to the, the subject matter all right so basically i yeah this definitely feels like a new game plus who recently did a documentary on boogie and before everyone freaks out about this because i know a lot of people saw the boogie documentary and were like wow that documentary was not positive that documentary was very negative it shows all the weaknesses of boogie all his shortcomings the fact that he basically pissed his life away all his money away that he's a toxic guy who falls into drama and he has all these issues. You're right. But that's what they wanted to do with that documentary, you understand? That's actually what they wanted to portray in that documentary. That was the whole point. To show that side of his life, which I guess they felt had never been really revealed before. Um, right, that's what I told you in the beginning of the stream. Feel, uh, feel, 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 DSP. Feels like he is better than Boogie and he's fucked up much less than him. So his documentary is going to be way more positive. You see? That's exactly what, was what they were going for, okay? I was contacted by Mike and he says, basically, this is fascinating. There's people out there who want to see a documentary about you. But he didn't know that much about me, okay? So, by the way, and just for the record, this was months ago. This was not yesterday. This was months ago. Okay, where we actually began talking behind the scenes about stuff like this. And basically through a series of conversations, okay, that I had with this guy, as I explained my story to him, he was basically like, so you're, this is completely different from Boogie. Yeah, it's not even close. My life is nothing like his. I'm not in the situation he's in, <clears throat> you know, my, in my opinion. And this is my opinion, and other people can disagree. I feel like... In my, my position is a much better position. Right? That's you what I'm what I mean? saying. Like him, he's in horrible hell. So according to DSP, he's going to end up looking squeaky clean. This is going to clean up his whole image. Just like what the side scrollers was supposed to do. Financially, he's distraught. He can't make ends meet. He's desperate, which is why he's on things like this. Phil is not desperate. Where Anything but. hands and knees and being mistreated by Keemstar to make money. Um... He's in a real desperate way, right? That's very much not the case, okay, with me. I have a successful business. I enjoy coming to stream with you guys every day. Hey, I Mike, by the way, send me a... He sent me a, an email about being in the documentary, dude. Do for a living. I'm going to reach out to I'm him. I'm making it happen. Since he right? invited I'm me personally, I feel like I should. It's a nice thing to do. Life which happened already, and I'm, all, I'm climbing out of it. It's slow progress, but it's definitely progress, right? My story is basically that even though I've made all of these improvements over the years, 
and I am not representative of what people make me out to be anymore. Maybe one day, 10, 15 years ago, I was really bad. I was obstinate. I was stubborn. I was stupid. I right. said I did awful things, right? And I got away with it, basically. And I'll <laughs> you got away with it. Years later, <laughs> and I'm still able to run a business, albeit a much smaller <laughs> scale business than what I used to do. That was an awesome flex. I got away with it, basically. But Come on, dude. <laughs> people still talk about me, right? The problem is oh my God, misrepresentation. And you might say, well, I don't get it because you, you already have addressed everything. But I, I thought they canceled him for the things he, that he did 10 years ago. But now he got away with it? He didn't even get away with it at the time. You're right. I have addressed all of the bullshit and nonsense out there. However, I addressed it here, right? And no one listens to me when I say it on my own content. No one. This is me talking to my audience who already, it's like, it's like what do they call it? You're preaching to the choir. You guys already know the deal, right? The fact is, most people don't. There's no central place you can go on the internet to the story of Dark Side Phil. Dude, this is exactly what he said for the interview. Exactly what he said. For one place that you can go to have all your questions answered. Exactly what he fucking said. It's this detractor. This is just the interview all over again. Content, this detractor content, this documentary that's way outdated and has outdated information this documentary that just regurgitates the detractor conspiracy theories there's literally nowhere you can go to say i want to learn about dark side phil why does everyone talk about this guy i don't get it and get an actual answer that's fair and makes sense okay and so after having ta talked to mike all right the idea that we came up with was to do a documentary that's going to, for the first time ever, and I'm going to say this, likely for the last time ever. Whoa. Cover my actual real story. End all and be all. Me growing up. What it was like. Who fucking cares? Right. You talk about it like... He's talked about growing up like every day. Games. He's still growing up. If you're supposed to listen to him, he's still growing up. You know? Because he's learning about things that people are supposed to do and supposed to learn about when they're like seven. He's like 41. He's still learning about it. He's still developing and he's still growing up. What it was like when I was a kid, asked my parents, you know, what was it like raising Phil and stuff like that, right? Um, going through the arcade days, going through the, the Street Fighter days. Oh my God. Arcade, this is going to be a heavy skip. Kind of, uh, how do they say, almost fraternity culture. And shit talking was encouraged, right? And how that carried into my competitive Street Fighter career. And there is shit talking, and then there is what he did, which was just basically being an uns insufferable prick, and that's why everybody hated him. It wasn't just shit talking. People can tell when somebody's shit talking. When you're playing basketball with somebody and they're calling you out because you can't shoot or you can't block, you can't dribble shit, that's shit talking. What he was, be what he was doing was being a jackass. That's why nobody wanted to do anything with them. The 2000s is how it became an innate part of who I was for a very long time. How eventually, after having a back injury and deciding to quit competitive Street Fighter, how that turned into a job becoming a YouTuber, right? And how I was popular on YouTube. And then everyone else decided to run with it and change it up and do it differently. But I was the guy who made that improv commentary style popular. All right? And then... After that, you know, the entire story of how I became popular for a two or three year period, I was one of the top YouTubers. This is but then how way this too long of a segment. Soured public opinion against me, how it turned the crowd against me, and how that affected me, how t these groups of detractors formed online social communities around hating on me. Big and ups. How it changed everything. Shout out for hate. Attacks against me to ruin the business, and how I went on a big decline as a result of stagnation and bad choices on my part but just as much their actions as well. And basically doing all of that in a way that number one covers facts, but also is entertaining. Because ultimately the last thing you wanna do is have a documentary about someone that's boring, okay? That boogie documentary is sad. I don't wanna make a documentary about me that's sad. What's the point? I don't want people crying and having a sob story about Dark Side Phil. My life is not a sob story. It's interesting. People have said, would you ever write a, 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 an autobiography or whatever? Maybe one day I would, but I never really thought about that. And then when I start talking to Mike, he's One like, day oh, when, he, when he learns how to write, maybe he can do an autobiography. Your story is interesting. 
The more I hear, the <laughs> he more... He can get Jade to write it for him. He's gonna be Ghost Rider. I'm hooked. I want to hear more things about you. You know, about how this, this journey happened or whatever. This is not a, 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 a crying situation about how awful things are. My life is not awful, right? But it stands to reason that to actually have a fair documentary about me that covers everything, my whole history, not just the, the bullshit conspiracies and negative shit about me. Not to say that stuff won't be in it, but to cover everything fairly and, again, in an entertaining manner. That's really the key here is to make something that you guys want to watch. That's not just for my haters. It's not just for my fans. It's actually for an outsider as well. Someone who's never heard of me, but you say, you know, I hear the name Dark Side Phil every once in a while. I wonder about this guy. What about, you know, can I learn about him? This is the documentary you're going to watch. This hour or two hours, however long it, it ends up being, this is going to be your go-to piece of content to watch. Right. All right. And you're going to watch it and say, okay, there you go. That's what he's about. And then you can judge for yourself. Hey, maybe you want to come by and check out my content based on the documentary. Or maybe you're zero interest and you'll never check me out. And that's okay too, right? But at the very least, this is really, it seems to me, okay, that this is the only chance that I really have to have a neutral party be involved in making something that actually is fair. That side scrollers interview was a complete attempt at getting me to look bad and get me to confess to shit I didn't do. There was no point to doing it, but I didn't know that at the time. I was promised all these things and it was all lies, all bullshit, right? The whole thing was basically a front for them to propel themselves to popularity, which, <laughs> yeah, that really worked. Uh, but still, you get it? Like, <clears throat> something like this is different. Well, it actually did That's work. What I mean, like, what you got? I mean, it exposed him for seeming like a liar because he definitely looked like a liar. Uh, it boosted their numbers, it got him a bunch of money, and it kind of jump-started their channel. So yeah, they get like a, at least a thousand viewers when they have a pretty hype guest, so they're doing something. I just don't understand it, because I know some people are- if, if you think from their perspective, they fucking owned him. ...are reacting negatively to it, and fair enough, and I understand why, here's why. I've never gotten a fair shake before. Never! You're right! The quartering interview was uh, the definition of a fair shake because the guy didn't challenge anything DSP said. He might as well have been sitting there playing on his phone. Every single person has screwed me over. Whoever tried, you know, tried to do something, right? So that's the point. Now, here's the thing. Does this mean that there's no one going to be involved negatively? Of course not. They're going to be in there. Everyone's going to be in this thing. I mean it. Every, everyone who's, who's, you know, is going to be in this damn thing, it's going to be entertaining for that very reason. But here's the thing. I get to respond to all the bullshit, Whoa. right? When you get one of these talking head idiots on there saying something about me, I get to talk back. Okay. It's not just them so? yelling at me. So that is still going to be very one-sided because it's basically what I'm doing right now to the point where I can, I can fucking call him a pedophile and he can't tell me anything. He can't fucking respond. He can't address this. It's not really a conversation. It's not a debunk. Their audience and their audience saying, hey, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, just like your audience fucking does. Instead, I actually finally get to respond to their book. Finally get to respond, implying that he has the desire to respond, which is why he bans people from his channel, by the way. He loves responding to them so much that he loves banning everybody. Bullshit, you see? And that's the point is that this is my format to finally do it. I can respond to them, but if I respond to them here, no one hears it. If I respond to them in the documentary, now that same audience that just heard the toxicity gets to hear my response to it. You see? And again, I want you to understand something. This is not going to be ultra serious at all times. This is going to be fun. It's going to be a project that... What does that mean? Is going to They're going to go to a water park? Kind of which you've not seen from me. Okay. It's not just going to be me. That's literally it, Cope Side Phil. So basically, Phil will get the final word every time a troll or anyone says something negative about him. That sounds very fair to me when he gets the final word and there is no back and forth. It's just responding to stuff in his signature DSP way of responding to stuff, which is deflect, make up a straw man, then attack that straw man and win. Sitting here on my chair, 
doing games and talking to you? What's the point? If literally the whole documentary was a bunch of shit about me and me just sitting here saying, well, here's the truth about that, here's the truth about that, that's boring. No one cares about that, right? So, that's going to be the difference here, all right? And my goal is that when this thing comes out, okay, <clears throat> when this thing comes out, I want it to be the final go-to source for people to learn about me and my story, and that's that, because I don't want to hear any more bullshit from these people. Not to say that they're not going to continue, because they will. It will always continue. We know this, that these people are so desperate for content. When you have no talent, you have to milk others for content, yes, correct? Yes, milk them. Not even for sustenance, just for content. I'm not even drinking this milk. I'm just selling it. You have nothing. Oh yeah, please buy the milk. Make for yourself. Please. So you have to milk the world around you for content in a toxic way. They're never going to go away. For someone who claims he's not a lol cow, he sure talks about milking too much. A little bit too much. I mean, I don't fucking, I don't talk about milk that much. And like, man, I regularly visit Twitch to look at all the high quality content they have. Wait, but the oh, by the way, Twitch banned the, the naked booby girls. They didn't ban them, but they change their TOS again. At the very least, once this story This is out, their weekly change in TOS. And I can actually move on positively and say, you want answers about anything of my past or anything, go watch the Mike Clum documentary and leave me alone. Because I'm moving forward with my audience here, right? Will anything- That's literally, replace Mike Clum documentary with side scrollers interview and it's word for word a repeat of last year. Word for word. Positive come out of it? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. But I don't, the thing is, there's so much toxicity and negativity about me on the internet. I don't think it could hurt, right? Really, honestly. You guys are not going anywhere. You guys are here every day. You understand yeah, me you, and who I you am. You brainwashed right idiots. You're going to watch me no matter what. Be with me no matter what. You know the truth. I've already told the stories, right? You're going to get, even you guys are going to get some good stuff out of this documentary. Trust me, there's going to be funny scenes. There's going to be information you've never heard before. You know what I'm saying? There's going to be interesting stuff, all right? And again, I totally understand because there's people in the chat right now who are like, I don't trust it. I think it's, you know, I hear you. I understand because we have, again, we as a community, and I've said this before, it's not just about me. It's about us. Yeah, right? yeah. Everything that I do has an impact on everyone around me, and I know that. So when I did that side scrollers interview, it wasn't just a shitty situation for me. It was a shitty situation for the community for like two, three months, right? But you loved it, bro. The day after the 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 decompression stream after the interview, he thought it was the best thing to ever happen. And people were telling him, Hey Phil, you kinda you know, you, you kinda look like a liar in that one. You kinda you know, you, you didn't look very good, man. It looks like you kind of took the loss on this one. Oh my god, no, it was like the best thing. It's exactly what I wanted it to be. And he continued with the narrative of that being exactly what he wanted it to be for months. Actual months. And I hear, I hear you on that. This is very different from everything that I'm involved with. It's professional, right? I've got, you know, there's agreements in place. You know what I mean? Like this is on the up and up going to be something that's going to be fun and fair. I'm not saying is it, this, by the way, by no means whatsoever is this kind of a, a kiss my ass thing either. I want you to understand that. That's not the point. It's not supposed to be a documentary where it just looks good constantly. I've, I'm a flawed human. I've made many mistakes over the years, you know, being a YouTuber way before then as well. And I've fessed up to them. The thing is, no one hears that. No one hears that Phil admitted he did something wrong. Like what? Instead, it's just he's... He admits the things that he did wrong back in like 2009. Uh, like over a decade after people been calling him out on it being wrong, and he's been stubborn to not admit and even double down on some of the things. Pig-headed guy who says that he's the best guy ever, right? That's not the case, but no one hears the truth. You understand what I'm saying? Sure. I, th I thought they were going to so... hear it on the side-scrollers. I don't... Oh, I need to rewatch that interview, man. You need man. to worry as much as you do. Especially because, as Cause I said, he, like when the interview was happening, he loved being there. He even stayed for the post show on the uh, for the Patreon people because he just had such a fun, amazing time, and he loved it. And he loved the guys. He was watching their show every day, and then like something changed. I'm in a situation here where 
it's very different from everything else. It's not, oh, it's just an interview. It's just this or that. This is a situation where it's going to be done in a very professional way, all right? And it's going to actually give my side. It's going to give exclusive information and stuff. Oh, exclusive. Um, it's going to be very different. Let's and he's banning that. somebody right all now. Right? Because this is how open he is to debunk the fucking idiot trolls, those talking heads. He loves debunking them so much, he bans them so they can't say anything. By the way. That's the debunk. I know some people are really worried about Nice little debunk hammer. This, It's something that's not happening right away. This is something that is going to take months and months to put together. Something of this scale and magnitude. You know, this is basically kind of a net. Considering it's DSP, it might take years. Netflix level hour-long documentary about me and... It's going to take a lot of time. There's going to be filming. There's going to be all kinds of things that's going to happen. So to be transparent with all of you, yes, this is going to affect me this year. Um, there's going to be filming around here. There's going to be filming in studios. You know what I say? There's it's going to be a oh around here. Thing. This is not fucking around and just doing a few video clips edited together like all the other documentaries about me. This is actually a real product. You understand? <laughs> oh man. He, he's so, so hyped for this. Oh, he loves I, this. No, he already have, loves it. I have all the information yet. I will let you know. Okay. Um, basically, this is going to be a situation where I have to take a little bit of time away from streaming. Some of my streams will be affected. Obviously, they're going to want to film me at work. To what? see at what I'm doing. <laughs> Are you going to have Mike Glum in the corner with a camcorder filming him in his Zelda pajama pants? The way he's telling somebody he's a worthless human when they're fighting in Street Fighter. I sure fucking hope we get that. I love that. And, dude, I hope he doesn't clean up his office so Mike gets to see all the e exciting cables all over the place. All the dust all over the place. Dude, I'm, I'm imagining this right now. And this is a 10 out of 10. I hope this happens. But no, he's going to be on his best behavior. He might even wear jeans for that day. That's how serious and professional he's going to be. Right? There's going to be a few days where I'm not going to be able to stream because I'm going to have to go film a bunch of stuff. Guess what? We're going to be begging the next day because he wasn't able to stream, you guys. So down here, maybe consider down here, you know, the tips goal. Right, in a studio or other places or whatever. So when I they want to film with me while I'm at work, that's the the corniest shit he's ever said. Because we all know what him being at work means. I know. I hope they get some recordings of him calling somebody a worthless human or a mouth drooler. I would love to see that. All about that stuff. All right, I'm gonna let you guys know what's going on, so you'll know. Okay, this week, guys, two days, I'm not gonna be here on stream because I'm gonna be off filming. And I'm gonna I'll be, be back, filming. Right? <laughs> And also, I just want to let you guys know, I, I can't be spoiling this thing constantly because I, I, people are going to constantly be bombarding me with questions. So what's going to be in it? And what's going to be this? And what's going to be that? And what, you know what I mean? Um, I, it can't do that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can't, I can't be spoiling the whole dang thing. I know a lot of people want that. I'm not. I'm not going to spoil the whole, what's the point of it if I tell you everything we're doing in it, right? So if, if from time to time, as I'm working on it over the course of 2024... There's some stuff that I want to share with you. Maybe there's a behind the scenes clip or video that I want to share or a picture or something to show you, hey, we're working together and here's, you know, <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? Then we should absolutely do that to share, but it's not going to be spoiling the entirety of the whole thing. There's a ton of things in here you're not going to hear about at all till it comes out. It's going to be 100% under wraps exciting stuff you're only going to see in this documentary again the whole point is to get everyone who wants to learn about me to watch this thing i think it's going to be fascinating to see my story and then to see how people have reacted to it you know what i'm saying like look at all these people on the internet who crap on phil right but for what for what right? oh you you all also, will get to see i'd also one of the things that i want to get out of it i can't wait to hear how people I want to hear people's take on like what they think I do wrong and how I can actually improve because that's the f um Phil it's not you know the reason why he has so many trolls is how rejective he is to all kinds of constructive criticism 
So this is this is why we're kind of doing this right now, you know, because other people have said the trend before. But the whole idea is that he is so what's the opposite of receptive, non-receptive to criticism that people are doing stuff like this and making videos calling him out. If he actually wanted to know, he can just watch those videos. He can just go and check them out. People making videos about it on a daily fucking basis. Funny part is everyone always wants to constantly crap on you, but no one actually wants to help you. You know what I'm saying? You're doing everything wrong. Okay, so what should I be doing that would be right? Be just like you? Maybe I don't want to be you, right? Not everyone wants to be exactly the same. So there's going to be a lot of interesting things out of this, right? There is, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> so basically, there's going to be tons of different stuff in this thing. Tons, all right? And as I said, I'll let you know when I have more information, okay? I don't have all the information right now. You know, I, we have to, uh, we basically have to get to the point where things are hashed out dates-wise, so I can tell you. I can tell you right now, it won't even be soon. Like, it'll probably, at the earliest, a couple of months before we even start work on this thing when it comes to, like, filming and in-person stuff. So it's not like, oh, well, you just gave us a schedule for the month and now everything's different. No, no, no. This is not going to, this probably won't even be until. So know. confirmed. What is confirmed is that he is very confident going into this. And I talked a lot of uh, stuff about him being confident at the beginning of the stream. We will have in-person recordings of him. They want to film him at work. So we're going to get that. Uh, that's been confirmed from him so far. Maybe some work in March, April, and then probably some more. And I, from what I'm going to understand time frame wise this is something that's going to come out much later in the year. This is not something that's, again, this is a professional level thing. This is not something rushed out in a month and it's just edited clips. That's not the intention, okay? So this is a big endeavor. You know, I told you guys I have a lot of things in process for 2024. DSP Throwback is one of them, and that's the one that's coming the soonest. This documentary about me is another one, and that's coming later, much later in the year. Like, like I would, I would, you know, maybe summer, maybe fall. I don't know. It depends on a lot of factors. You know, there's a lot of stuff involved, you know, schedule-wise and everything. So we'll have to see. But just so you know, it's coming. And when more stuff is available to talk about, specifics and stuff that we're ready to talk about, I'm sure Mike and I will tell everybody okay so you can ask me questions but chances are i'm not going to answer a lot of these questions um until specifics are hashed out and we're ready to talk about it because i feel like a lot of of the times people want to just get the, everything in early i'm not going to tell you everything early right but ju just to make this perfectly clear this is not the boogie documentary at all this is not the intention of the boogie documentary that whole documentary had a different vibe and a different take to it and that's where Basically, Boogie and Mike wanted to go with that, and this is completely different. I made it very clear up front. I'm not Boogie. I'm not some sad story where we're going to be talking about how awful my fucking life is and everything. I don't want a sob story documentary. There's no sob story. My, my life is good. I have a good life every day. I have a great time with my audience. We all have a bunch of fun, you know? All the idiots outside of my streams are the ones who are miserable, have to talk shit all day, not Sure, me. sure, I have dude. A great time if you say so. Life, so there's, you know what I'm saying? There is nothing in this that's going to be oh my god not to say that we're not going to touch upon serious stuff like what past. you guys know about my history you know about all the problems like what and tribulations i've been through business wise and personal you know i've told you all these stories before but again this is going to be the focused place where i talk about it right? and we also got kind of a soft confirmation from the introduction to this whole segment that he is not going to talk about the champion stuff and the bank leak stuff or at least that's going to be kind of off the table. Kind of. Because, you know, he has answered it already, you guys. Right? All at once. And if you want to know anything about Dark Side Phil, this is where you go for it. And as I said, my intention is that this is it. Once this is done, this is a lot of time and effort and work going into this thing. This is going to be time away from my work, time away from streams for you guys. Once this is done, that is that. You know what I'm saying? That is that. It's done. It's, you know, I'm not doing another one of these damn things. Unless, like, aliens land and I have a story of how I won when I fought the aliens or something. You know what yeah, I mean? Like, yeah, something yeah, wild. Right. This is my Or he story. cured cancer or something. Oh. And after this, I just want to continue to do what I love for a living and not have to bother with this shit anymore. You know? But I feel like this is my fair chance.
to have a fun, informative, interesting documentary be made about me rather than it just be hit piece, hit piece, hit piece, hit piece, or even worse than that. You wanna know what's worse than a hit piece? Because here's the thing, with a hit piece, all right, you can tell when it's a hit piece, right? When you watch someone who really doesn't like someone and they're making negative content, you can tell this is a hit piece and you're not gonna have normal people watch a hit piece the only people who watch that stuff are people who actually don't like the person already. No, they not just really. Want to laugh at piling on, right? Not really. There's tons of people out there who don't like me. Their entire existence on the internet is anti-Phil. What's worse than a hit piece is someone who presents themselves as if they're a neutral party and doing it fairly, but literally all they do is regurgitate the conspiracy and toxicity that the there hit we go. people did. There Craig. But they'll oh, you see, well, this is what everyone says about them. Yeah, but all you did was regurgitate the bad. Did you actually say anything good? Did you talk to a single person about good stuff about me? They didn't come forward, bro. Apparently, there wasn't any. Or did you only just literally regurgitate the same boring what shit are the that good stuff? The last what are the good stuff that he does differently from anybody else? You know, he plays video games. What are the good stuff? What is the good thing that he's done for his community selflessly? And I'm selflessly is a very important word here. We're not looking to benefit from something. Everything he does, everything, even fucking blowing bubbles, is related to some kind of benefit that he gets. It's something that he does because somebody else did their job. It's 10 years. And he does it so as a reward. You a fucking video besides circle jerking yourselves into those communities for more milking of money. Because the funny part is they say lol cows, right? But the thing is, when they're, when, as much as they say they're milking someone for content, you want to know who they're really milking? The detractors. Every moment that one of those people make one of those documentaries, all they're doing is milking the detractors for their views and money. Because and my money. fans don't care. I don't care. Well, I, I like watching those videos. They're pretty entertaining. I don't even watch it. It's them that they're milking, not me. Yeah, sure, it's about me, but you literally didn't even say anything new. All you did was regurgitate the toxic shit and you milk them for money and views, not me. It doesn't come from me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So in this case, yes, this documentary will absolutely address some of the conspiracies and toxic things that are said about me. 100% those will be addressed. But at the same time, there's going to be the more fair human aspect to it. Addressing me as a person, my history, what I actually, what I stand for, what kind of content I put out What the fuck does he stand what for? Claims I put out what the fuck does he actually stand for? That's the weirdest fucking shit. What does he actually stand for? Because he's been for and against a bunch of things that he is doing currently. He stood firmly against doing reaction videos because that's the type of shit somebody did when they had nothing else to do. We have DSP reacts. He stood firmly against uh, saying mean stuff and slurs. And now he's up uh, uploading his videos from 2010 that are fucking full of them. What does he fucking stand for? Come on. Anything he stands against, he stands for whenever he sees the possibility of fucking profit. Years ago, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's going to be very, very different. All right. So, like I said, I will have way more information about this as it develops. Right. This is with Mike, where we're going to plan and discuss things. And then, like I said, up on the channel as a preview of something that will be in this, this project, learn all kinds of stuff about me. If you just heard the name Dark Side Phil, maybe you only saw one clip of me ever and you want to hear my story. That's what the point of this documentary is, you see? So, so there you go. So now the beans have been spilled to the point where at least you have a general understanding um, <clears throat> of what this is going to be, all right? And again, the funny part about this is when people say stuff like, well, you know, I think that Mike is going to try to screw you. How? Like, why would he do that? Because if he does, who else would ever work with this guy ever again? Yeah, right. that, that's what I was saying in the beginning. Mike seems like a professional, and I think he's going to do a, a decent enough job to his fucking standards of quality to not intentionally misinterpret or misconstrue DSP. But that's the thing that many people say is that he's one of those guys that if you give him enough rope, he's just going to hang himself. He doesn't need to be made to look bad. You just need to present him for who he truly is and his real personality. If, if Mike becomes known as the guy who screws people when he makes a documentary about them, well, who would ever want to work with Mike ever again? Do you think he's doing it for a one-off video and he's running and never making content ever again? That doesn't make any sense. He wants to make good content 
that everyone's happy, right? That's the point. <clears throat> so there you go, okay? All right, so anyway. Anyway. Um, that's that. Now, I have a few quick shout-outs to do. We're going to get through those, and I'm sure you guys are going to probably have questions, and I'll field your questions for as much as I possibly can. But again, all right. Oh, we're, <laughs> we're going to get a bunch of repeats to this, Basically, this segment. Basically, what I want to do is answer as much quick, but I want to kind of get this out of the way. When I start playing Baldur's Gate, I want to play Baldur's Gate. When I play Sea of Stars, I want to play Sea of Stars. That's Let's see. Is he playing Baldur's Gate right now? Oh, no, we're still... We're still doing stuff. The whole point of us doing this that podcast is not playing is games. To talk about this now, um, and go from there, okay? And by the way, Abdullah says I'll I'll call this out now. Trying to prove people, trying to prove anything to people is a waste of time. It's better to move on with your life. You're right. Again, I'm telling you, that's not the point. This is not Phil's debunkery and for an hour. That's not the point of this this documentary. It's a real documentary. See, here's the thing, you guys are completely misunderstanding because you have only seen toxic shit about me on the internet. That's the difference here. But I think that's just his fans, right? Who don't watch the toxic shit. He said like two, three minutes ago that his fans don't watch any of that stuff. And the detractors are the real idiots because they are getting milk. And now we're just contradicting themselves. When you hear, oh, it's a documentary about Phil and you turn it on, the whole thing's negative stuff about me for two hours. Oh, well, you know, all right. So is this documentary going to be Phil just response to that for two hours? No. No. That's, it's real. This is a real documentary. And this is, again, what people don't get. Because you haven't seen a real thing about me yet. You literally haven't seen one. I would say the closest one that came to this was the Frederick Knudsen documentary from many, many years ago. But that got a lot wrong. Had limited information. Right? It, it was, and by the way, it's incredibly outdated at this point. And also, he didn't talk to Phil, which I think makes it not a real documentary, according to Phil. But now it's a real documentary. Point. You see? You see? So there you go. I I agree with Abdullah. If this if this entire thing was two hours of me directly responding to people shitting on me and just saying, oh, that's wrong, there's no point. You're absolutely right. Then there would be no point to doing it. Zero. But that's not what this is going to be. I'll tell you that right now. Okay? <clears throat> <laughs> Okay. All right, so let's do some shout outs. All right. Um and uh and then let's I, I'm sure you guys are going to have some questions, right? So let's do some shout outs first of all. Um it looks like Snow Carl, we have to for 19 months, my wardrobe, I'm sure. This is my older Nautica sweater. Oh right? no, we don't want to know Two. about this. Yesterday and everyone freaked out. So yeah, these will be in my rotation as as the oh, weather. We got a sweater rotation. So thank you Snow Carl. Uh Dr. Oink with the super chat says you like Flyleaf or Paramore? That's bands. No, I don't think so. Um, I don't even recall their... I think they're bands, right? But I don't think I, I remember their music very much. And Lil Shake and Bake did a super chat this morning. Thank you, Lil Shake and oh, Bake. Oh, that's, uh, that's the most recent cuck. I guess he's not that recent anymore, but it's a very recent and very hardcore dedicated cuck. We'll swing over to some tips. Let's swing over those tips. Oh, uh, let's see here. <clears throat> But have you changed your mind? No, because I didn't have a negative opinion of it. You don't know what you're talking about. Wait, what? Snow Carl took me a dollar. So I remember you had a very negative opinion on Baldur's Gate earlier this year. No, I didn't. I have not followed the playthrough, but have you changed your mind? No, because I didn't have a negative opinion of it. You don't know what you're talking about. So thanks for the dollar tip. Seriously, I'm just, when I hear nonsense like that, I'm just going to say, sorry, Snow Carl. Well, he said uh, it was never going to win about? Game of the I Year, and it did. I talked Baldur's Gate 3 yeah. ever. All right. I ever. always said it was probably a fine game, but I didn't think it would fit into my content. And now here we are. Okay. So Anime Slayer tipped me a dollar and says, Mike seems neutral, but this seems like it's revolving around drama. I don't see how telling my life story is all about drama. You will find out eventually, uh, Phil. I wish you'd stick to your guns about staying out of drama. Again, the whole the, will there be some fun stuff in this and funny stuff? Yes, there will. Like it's what? Not ultra serious. It's not a one hour. He's going to put the, the Nazi hat on again. Boring. The, uh, excuse me, the pilot hat. The M. Bison replica hat. That is, it's not like the real hat, by the way. But a sleep documentary. But it's also not an hour-long hit piece against me. But it's not an hour-long kiss my butt. It's an hour-long interesting piece about my actual life history. That's mostly, I would say, would make more sense for outsiders. 
But for those who like me, you're going to like it. For those who don't like me, you're likely going to like it. Like, everyone I think would like it. Well, clearly, his ultimate idea is for that documentary to get, like, 2 million views and a fraction of those people to become his supporters, uh, which is kind of what is going to happen anyways because, I mean, of a 2 million people, you can find, like, 200 people that are going to become his supporters. Right? But this is not, again, people are getting the wrong idea. You have seen only content about me that's purely negative. And so when you see content about me that's only purely negative, you immediately say, so this is just going to be nonstop drama. No. I mean, I don't think so. I think it's going to be eye-opening. I think there's going to be a lot of information that people didn't know that finally, oh, okay, now I get that. Now I finally understand that, right? I've heard about that, but I didn't. Know, I don't get that. And you know what I'm saying? I think it's a lot different. There's going to be a huge segment about how he used to be an alcoholic. You can bet on that. I do. I think it's a lot different than what people are thinking it's going to be because you've only seen that one thing, right? Oh, did Mike reach out to Derek? Hold on. Okay. <clears throat> Let's continue. <laughs> Hold on. I need to find this tweet. I need to find that tweet, bro. I received a $20 tip for one minute. Oh, yeah. Baldur's Gate 3. Hold on. Shut the fuck up with the 20 minute man uh at derek loves aw hi derek i'm working on a de documentary about dark side phil which is authorized by phil and i'm hoping to speak to some of his fans would you like to be willing to connect feel free to message me at my email or follow back so i can message with you yeah that's it's it's not it's not happening bro <laughs> and then somebody posted the derek uh twitter engagement stats and look at this bro he's engaging with himself on multiple accounts and, of course, as nobody else could predict, a bunch of porn stars. That's fucking hot. That's fucking hot. Oh, man. I, I really wish we can get a Derek feature. The champ is finally here. For the $20 contribution, and let's see what he has to say. Uh, we don't care about what One Minute Man has to say. It's always just a boilerplate thing. It's like, hey, Phil, I like your playthrough of this. Uh, have you tried to press the X button to see what's going to happen? Uh, thanks, Phil. Here's 20 bucks. If I could type today, apparently I can't. Locked in or away from you. Also, gunpowder barrels can take out multiple enemies with me. Like, I know you could pick objects up and walk to a spot and we came across in the wrong way, and that's my fault, and I fessed up to that. Wait, what? Well, I'm sure Mike is going to be reaching out to lots of people. Whether or not those people decide to actually be involved in the project, is up to them and him you know not me you know what i'm saying like for me you guys know my take on john rambo right we worked together for many years we were friends when i moved the friendship eroded basically he felt like the only reason we were friends was for work i disagree but i probably came across in the wrong way and that's my fault and i fessed up to that we haven't spoken since 2015 right so it's been almost nine years okay at this point, there's no friendship there. There's no discussion to even be had between me and him. Yeah, well, if that documentary is going to be about how Phil grew up in following him throughout his entire career, John Rambo is a pretty significant part of that, so I don't see why he wouldn't be in it. That just doesn't really make sense. Now, if Mike reached out to John Rambo and said, hey, I'd like to interview you about the years that you worked with Phil, and, th and he says, yeah, I'll do that, then great. What's wrong with that? I have no problem with that. I told you, I've already kind of fessed up to the things that I've done wrong. I know that I mismanaged my friendships and relationships in the past. I've said as much. You know, two years ago, I reacted to the John and Howard uh, slam video, whatever you want to call it. And I told you how that was the first time I had ever heard that stuff from them. I didn't have any concept that that was how they felt. I feel awful about it, right? And... It sucks because if I had known that stuff at the time, I probably could have changed the way that things were going, but it was never really clearly explained to me, which is hilarious because in that video, they claimed they said time and time again, it's like, yeah, but everything you said was different. First, we're talking about Project 7. Then we're talking about a comment about a Project 7 video. Then we're talking about something completely unrelated, but you act like it was a line of stuff that was happening over and over that didn't. Like, that's not how it actually happened. Um, but the point I'm making here is... Uh, I, I made those mistakes. This is nine plus years ago, last time I talked to the guy. 
anything they interview him about is going to be about my ancient past, and he has the right to okay. speak up if he feels like it. But here's the thing. Here's what he um, he trapped himself in, right? He talked about how amazing it's going to be. We're going to be talking about his entire history. And there's a lot of people in his ancient history that might have some interesting things to talk about. Yeah. If Mike wanted to reach out to John Rambo, why, why on earth would I be like, oh, no, you know? So it really, it's really up to him and who he wants to talk to and who wants to talk to him. Because you got to understand another thing, too, is that a lot of people from my past are just that. They're from my past. And now that they're out of this whole public eye, right, maybe, maybe one of the major reasons why John doesn't want to ever be involved ever again is because he doesn't want to be in the public eye. He likes having a private life. This is very different. Me being on the internet in front of you every day is very different than what my life was before I was a YouTuber, right? And I think some people, they see that, they get that exposure, and then they realize it's not what they wanted, and they just want to have a private life again, and they don't want to have drama, right? So I wouldn't be shocked if tons of people from my past say they don't want to be involved whatsoever because they just don't want to be in, drawn into that. They got their own good thing going on with their lives. Why do they need to be drawn back into this internet drama vortex, right? That would be my take, but that's up to them. And if, if they want to be a part of it, that's up to them too, right? Even though this is a documentary about me, I also want you to understand that I am not ultimately 100% controlling everything. I'm not being like, so by the way, let's outline every single piece of the documentary, right? And I'm going to put, I'm going to tell you if I like it and if I don't. And if I don't like it for some reason, we're just striking it completely from this documentary. No. Oh, I mean, he's going to, he's going to wish that was the case by the time it comes out. One of the reasons you guys know that Mike is doing this documentary is because he's already reached out to detractors. He's reached out to other people who talk shit about me all the time because he wants to have those takes in the documentary. He wants to hear from that community to understand why they don't like me. You see? He wants everything. He, that's the point of a real documentary is that you get all sides. Oh, not, man. It's just one this side is, to this. This, this, oh, this is not going to work out well for him one-sided to that ultimately he's gonna get a bunch of fucking attention since it's it's happening it's inevitable he's gonna get a bunch of attention and it all depends on how much of that attention is gonna be positive and how much is gonna be negative and i'm i'm willing to say that the majority oh man he's not gonna like it so you get all takes you understand because like he is we're, we're talking about somebody who is so secluded He's a hermit. He is delusional, straight up delusional. Um, I, I, I fucking always believe that he is. He's buying whatever the fuck he's selling. He has zero self-awareness. He can't read the room. And for him, this is a massive spotlight and somebody is making a documentary about him, professional level. And it makes him feel awesome, right? It makes him feel special and amazing. But, you know, that's, that's just his opinion. So there you go. Well, I have a say when it comes to the final cut of the documentary. Yes, for particularly when it comes to privacy. Obviously, when you're doing a documentary about something, right? Or about someone, I should say. There's got to be things that are that have to be left private. You know, you can't just have someone just, you know, walking around filming everything and it just hits the internet. You know, there's stuff that obviously... I've told you guys, there's been situations where I film in my kitchen... And I accidentally left a statement on my countertop for my, my utility bill. And my detractors contacted the utility company, impersonated me, and tried to have my power shut off, right? Yeah, that's very funny, but it's, imagine, it's pretty toxic. Right? You could just imagine the nonsense that could happen if they're filming and something accidentally gets revealed. You know what I'm saying? And now there's trouble. So that's the thing. Like... We're going to, well, yes, there's going to be filming. There's going to be, they're going to be filming me working. There's going to be all this stuff. But ultimately, you know, we're going to be reviewing all of it. All right. And oh, yeah. This, this does not give me an, a, a lot of confidence, to be honest, that he has a say in the final cut and he's going to be reviewing all of it. It just doesn't sound good to me. I don't think you should have that when you're making a documentary. Having the subject of your documentary have the final say of what makes it in the cut and what doesn't. It's going to be... We're going to be reviewing all of it? Yeah, man. I doesn't make me feel very confident. Make sure that nothing bad is, is that, that's harmful or anything like that. 
would be in there. I don't care about someone giving an opinion. If he interviews someone and they have a negative opinion about me, I don't give two shits. That's the whole internet anyway, right? Like the whole internet's full of that shit. But I do care if someone comes on is, you know, not someone comes on. If, uh, if you know, something is filmed that now is going to be revealing and is going to get me in, you know, some kind of trouble because detractors now have information that they could use to hurt me and my family. You know what I'm saying? Like that's the stuff you got to be careful about, right? So there you go. Um, all right. We have a million things going on here. Uh, Fizzgig did a super chat. Will Kat and Jasper be in the dock? Uh, at this point, all right, we're in planning stages. Nothing's been filmed. Ideas are being discussed and things like that. Absolutely nothing is certain. C certainly, certainly, you know, I know people would want to see everyone who's part of my family unit be in this. Um... But I'm not going to promise anything. You know me. I don't overpromise and underdeliver. Yeah, right? yeah. That's me. Of course. He doesn't overpromise. Do never. So I underdeliver, especially with the underdelivering. You guys never. Thing and then have it not happen. So specifics on stuff like that. I'm simply put, not going to make any promises. You know, once we get stuff solidified, once we get things so that's pretty much a no. Stuff planned to be filmed and everything. Then, as it stands, I'm calling this a no. Maybe it's going to change, but who knows? I'll give you a perfect example. I would love to have Jasper in this as a segment, but here's the problem. Jasper is deathly afraid of visitors. Whenever someone comes to this house, he runs Bro, and like, hides the under the bed. Like, and what the fuck, dude? You're going to waste actual space and time in the documentary to have a segment about your fucking cat that is the most generic cat anybody has ever seen before? The most generic cat. You can find a cat on the street that is eating a dead car carcass of some fucking roadkill that is more interesting than Jasper. Same goes for cat. It doesn't matter if it's someone coming for maintenance, a, a Comcast technician, anybody. Literally anyone who comes to this house, he hides under the bed the whole time. And then he waits for them to leave and then he comes out. And we've tried coaxing him and making him feel... He's, he's literally a scary cat around strangers. So would I love to have a segment with Jasper? Yes, I don't know if there's a person here or people in here with cameras and stuff. If they're gonna, if he's even gonna come out to play, you know what I'm saying? And he's an indoor cat. He's not leaving this house. You have to understand. That. I'm not taking him to a studio to film the guy. You know, he has to be at home and safe. So they're gonna you know, go to a studio to film the DSP documentary, dude. <laughs> that's what I mean. Like we're. I'm I'm sure I've joked about this in the past that some stream at some point in my life about DSP having a documentary or an autobiography, but man, it's it's actually happening now. So early in these stages, we, I can't promise you guys stuff about stuff like that, right? Truth is, you guys see him a lot on streams. Like, every a, a few days a week, he's on streams, dancing around here, jumping on my chair and everything, right? But, okay, so guys, I got a lot more to shout out. I knew this was going to happen. I knew that you the knew it was going to happen. Extra, extra long today. Yeah. Um... <laughs> He knew this was going to happen, also known as he knew he was going to get money. That's that's what that means. Really. I received an incredibly generous tip. A hundred dollars. I wondered, was this intentional? What? Little shake and bake, did you intend to send me this? Yeah, he did. He's a fucking diehard cuck. Of course he did. I just want to be sure because this is crazy. Like, this is one of the biggest contributions I've received in a long time. I just want to be sure that this is real. You didn't accidentally add in some zeros. <laughs> okay. Is that a 1K? Are we getting a You're 1K? You intended to send that. Okay. Little Shake and Bake has sent me a $200 <laughs> kit this morning. 200 smackaroos. Oh, man. Wow. Thank you so oh, much, wow. Little Shake and Bake. That's it's super crazy. positive, dude. Right. Put on the best. Yeah, I'm not Slap even that That's shit one on. Of the biggest tips I've received in ages. I in think the last ages. time I got a tip that big was June of last year for the launch of Street Fighter 6. Bro, what the fuck is this flex? He got like a hundred bucks like yesterday or something. And now we're acting like he never gets this much money. So thank you. Let's play you the ginormous animation. Whoa. Which I didn't even think I would be playing. Whoa, he never thought somebody would send him a lot of money. That's why he had the animation for a lot of money. He never thought so. He was unprepared. And that means you guys get to vote on a hat. As for a vest, I have to wear a very light vest because I'm already wearing a sweater today. So I'll make the light vests eligible. Let's certainly get a little shake and bake up here on the leaderboard, okay? Today. <laughs> See, I don't want to wear the bender hat. It's too hot. Uh, and I, I don't think I've ever even really done. I'm going to put... All right, I'll... I watch a lot of documentaries. It'll be cool to see one about someone I'm a fan of. Do you have 
childhood videos that could be included in the documentary. It would be awesome to see you opening your NES on Christmas. There are no videos from when I was a kid. Very well, my parents might have photos because they used to take pictures. Oh, dude. Hopefully we get to see Lil DSP. Lil, like, five-year-old Snortomaniac. That's going to be so funny. Oh, yes. Albums, but I... I don't. We never had a video camera. Little DSP where his head is like three times the size of his torso. That's gonna be so funny, dude. You know, I wasn't rich. I'm anymore. already hyped. Video cameras were super expensive in the '80s and '90s. If you weren't aware, they were thousands of dollars. Yeah, so. even millions. Um, so let's see here. I'm very glad there'll be funny scenes. That's what I'm excited for. Exactly. The point is to make something that is a one stop to know all about me, about who I am, what I'm all about, why so many people talk about me on the internet in both positive and negative ways, and also to have- So basically a marketing campaign. That's in his mind. This is a marketing campaign. So he gets to put himself out there, present himself. Hey, you guys, this is what you get if you subscribe to DSP Gaming. Also DSP Classics, even though you're going to get something different there with some more slurs. Also DSP Reacts. That's really the point of the documentary. It's not- to disp to dispel to dispel all negativity about me. It's not a two hour debunking session. It's not you know what I mean? It's also not two hours of just me kissing my own butt and making me look great. That's not the point either. No one would want to see that. I don't want to see that. <laughs> I, I don't want to kiss my own butt. So uh okay, continuing on. You see I had the idea people are voting for the Hogwarts legacy everywhere. Why didn't you play the Avatar? People who ended up playing the games. So that was number one. Number two <clears throat> was because... <clears throat> because there was an overwhelming desire to see me play Baldur's Gate. Yeah, you're just talking about the Avatar it's game an amazing now. opportunity. I want to say you're really brave for doing it. Hope you're really you're brave. A nuanced side of Dark Side, <laughs> Phil. I'm looking forward... You're really brave for getting a bunch of exposure on the internet that millions of people are going to see, dude. You're so brave. Or to He's a hero. A true American hero. People used to go to war, and now they make documentaries about themselves on YouTube. Oh, what a hero. I'm proud of him. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Snow Carl, for the dollar tip. Okay. Okay. And I received another dollar tip. Is he playing games now? Oh, yeah, he's almost playing games now. From JD 12 TV, minutes from now. I'm excited about this documentary. Thanks for doing it. Today's the first time I'm going to stay awake. I want to watch your late Sea of Stars stream. <laughs> I'm still on my holiday break. I hope I can make it to your late stream. Hope I don't fall asleep. All right, well, I hope you don't. And huge dominating, you guys, what it looks like. I didn't wear it that often. Oh, and now the scarf one. So he's going to wear a scarf. A Is he going to cry about being hot? The, I don't think he really can. Here, the Pokemon vest. None of those vests really go. And he can't wear you know, a vest. What I'm wearing. How could you wear a vest over a sweater, right? I don't think Bro, you, really you just can. got paid like 150 bucks to put on the fucking vest. Just put on the fucking vest. Go change into a t-shirt or something, man. Like, come on, what is this nonsense? And so it's really up to you. And let's be honest here, it's really up to Lil Shake and Bake. Because Lil Shake and Bake did the giant. Oh, yeah. Movie. So it's up to the cuck to decide what he gets to wear. This is like one of those titty streams on Twitch. Come on, you send him a bunch of money and then you get to decide stuff? It's literally a cuck stream. Shin, um, it's up to the cuck. Go ahead, you know what cuck. I mean? What are you going to say? <laughs> Wear a sweater over or, or vest over your sweater. The whole point of wearing the vest is you're wearing something light under it, and that's why you're wearing a vest. You know, it's like wearing a jacket over a coat. <laughs> it's kind of <laughs> stupid, right? Sure. Lack an answer or not? <clears throat> filmed or anything would be giving away too much. And what's the point of watching if you already know what's in it? Then again, there will be some teasers as well along the way. Hold on. Oh, yeah. There's going to be teasers. He's going to edge you, you guys. Like a dragon, my question is, would the old ESP enjoy Yakuza games? I don't give a fuck. Moment to moment and start to finish. Love you without it. Again, this documentary is going to have a little bit of something for everyone. All right? It will have stuff that my fans are going to enjoy and want to see. It's going to have stuff that people who don't like me want to see. And it's going to have stuff for people who know nothing about me. It's going to basically be like the go-to video about me for everyone. Okay? It's not going to be overly 100% anything, I feel. I think that's the way it would be better, is that it's not. It's not, again, it's not butt-kissing, but it's not shitting on. It's everything. Covering all of that, I think, is going to make it the fairest shake I've ever gotten, you see? All right, sure. And it's still going to make him look like a complete fucking idiot. Enough, they were Greek. It was Greek. And ironically, you know what's going to fucking happen? 
no matter how that documentary turns out, everybody's going to get a huge rise in engagement out of it. Everybody who talks about DSP, you know? So in the end, the trolls are still going to fucking win. So it, it, he's fucking locked into like a loss-loss scenario where the only situation where he wins is when he convinces himself that he's actually won. Like with the side scrollers. Pizza and Greek. Even though they objectively got the upper hand on him by just letting him talk. They just let him fucking talk. Stromboli. So it probably wasn't authentic. I thought it was all right, but I've never had like an authentic Italian Stromboli before. Play cool if you want the skinny. Watch the, the podcast back. Obviously, I'm not going to recap everything I just explained for over an hour about this documentary. But uh, to answer your question, no, the documentary will be coming this year, but much later this year. It's not coming out anytime soon. We haven't started even work on it yet. So, there you go. Because <clears throat> cannolis, you think they're like super... Prefer to Has anyone ever mentioned I look like Bono from U2? Yes, constantly people just mention how I look exactly like Bono. Like, to a right. T. I walk down the street, you know, and people start... <laughs> Dr. Roink, you joined late, didn't you? Dr. Roink, I suggest you also watch back the podcast. I would like to play Baldur's Gate 3. Fine. Thank you. I have a new 15 years of DLC. Oh, and that was it. I forgot to update. What am I supposed to do? Then just my... Here tomorrow. You mean we... Everyone who's... So I guess that's it, dude. Let me unleash the pop-up so everybody that sent something get Did anyone get the... force him to do the side-scrollers interview? No. Did anyone force him to react to the post-show of the side-scrollers? No. No. He did all of this of his own free will. Yeah. Baller alert. Craig said he tried to find and reach to fans, but he couldn't find any and no fan reached out yeah, to him. Yeah, that's so true. What was Craig supposed to do? That is fucking true. Him not addressing them doesn't mean they went ava. Uh, it's, uh, hold on. I, w I want to find this one. So, uh, first of all, did, did no, nobody forced him to do the interview. It was completely him wanting to do it. He decided to keep doing it even after it was pretty clear that they're going to address his controversies and so on and so forth, right? So it, it was completely by his choice, and he thought it went over fantastic until he didn't. DSP is just mad other people can get more money off his name than he can, and it's hilarious. I know, it really fucking pisses him off. It really pisses him off. The other people that just expose the fucking fraud he is can make more money than he does. Cries at video games. Has woman milkers. Estrogen. Uh, perhaps? I don't know, we need to do a blood test for that. Do you do a blood test? I guess we gotta. We gotta do more blood tests than Jasper's ever had to determine what's wrong with him. Uh, so with the with the side scrollers thing, um, he did the post show react thing because he was so salty that people just kept sending him money because they thought that the side scrollers did a good job and he wanted some of it. So he did. Uh, there was one night stream that he had where he was supposed to play a game that he turned it into reacting to the side scrollers on the DSP reacts channel that he had just launched a couple of months ago. Even I think it was two or three months ago. So he wanted something out of it because he realized that they were just raking in the fucking money from doing a fucking good job. And he was so fucking butthurt and pissed off. So actually, the thing that he accuses them of doing, which is they canceled their stream to talk about DSP, he canceled his gaming stream to talk about them. So I guess we're on the level. This happened months ago. He also said he was done with interviews, Dokitan and drama months ago, but he didn't lie. Sound yep. good? That was it. That was exactly how this went. And uh, he was stroking himself late last year that he stayed away from drama so good and people appreciated him from doing it. And now we're just diving back in. We're diving back in. Even though we never stopped in the first place. And then uh, big ups to AMAC for the five gifts, dude. Oh, excuse me. Whew, big burp. Okay. It's well, like well, 10 well, below zero. I'd there. like to hear if anyone else on the FGC almost got their rainbows beat on a parking lot because SH asterisk asterisk talking was encouraged. You know what? Maybe they actually did. I, I bet a ton of the dudes in the FGC being in their early 20s and talking a bunch of shit, I bet a bunch of them got into fights and like scuffles and shit like that. But DSB was the guy to actually pussy out and go and cry in the bathroom. Alert. 
so Phil wants a Donicon that puts him in an amazing light and everyone else in a bad light and makes everyone else out to be a horrible person. Well, that's what he wants, but his idea is that it's going to go a little bit differently, where it's going to expose his negative sides as well. Or at least his negative sides from 10 years ago is in his mind. Because in his mind, right now, he's a reformed person. He's doing everything amazingly. Everything is fucking great, right? People are enjoying the content. He's being positive every single day, never toxic. Or if he's toxic, it's just a joke. It's just a character. Don't take it seriously. Don't be offended, dude. Come on. The Level 1 Podcast is the DSP history show lol. It's always been, really. Since, since the day it started, it's always been his side of things. And exclusively his side. To the point where you can't challenge him, even if you're a fan. Remember the suggestion box? The thing that is not happening anymore because so many of the suggestions got destroyed and debunked immediately? Yeah, that's not a thing anymore. That's not happening. Go figure. Alert. Side scrollers gets almost 2k viewer daily and gets hundreds of dollars in super chats daily but show they aren't successful. Now I, I, I've only seen them having some big guests on uh, when they get like 2k views but that's the only time I've noticed them because I'm not subscribed, I don't follow their stuff, I'm not interested in the stuff they're putting out. But they had the, um, what was his name, the, the Razor Fist guy and I saw them while they were live and they had like 2k viewers so I guess they're doing alright. He don't want you to be sad but gets sick and brings it up months after for money. This dude has a birthday week and gets depressed and begs. Yeah, there you go. Baller alert. So basically Phil will get the final word every time a troll or anyone says something negative about him sodden's like a fair dog and jelly to me. Yeah, uh, and I love the, the way that Sundar also never says documentary for some reason. I actually have no idea. There's nothing in, in the word documentary. Oh yeah, it, it's come. Okay, it's come. There is come in the word documentary, so Sundar thinks that's a naughty word. Well, anyways, yeah, that's, that doesn't seem very fair to me if he gets the last word on anything that a troll has to say because we've heard him do it. We've heard him do it. It's deflect, create a straw man, you beat that straw man, you win. That's basically his strategy. Alert. Phil, I've been lying for 15 years and my community is dented. I'm a cult leader. I can respond. Me. Re, I did nothing wrong in my life. Well, Hashtag delusion. This is a. I would like him to say that, but he doesn't even know this is going on. So if he said that, that would be crazy shit. I might become a DSP fan then if I got him to be this honest. He's been lying for 15 years and his community is all dented and he's a cult leader. Alert. Phil has no idea what he's getting into, lol. I think so, but I guess we gotta wait and see. Gotta wait and see. Alert. The way he's acting and talking makes me even more worried it will be a softball dog and make Phil look amazing and everyone look awful. Um, I, I don't I necessarily think so. The dump. Uh, what was that? I hope we get him traveling to the dump. I hope we get a lot of ride-alongs with him. I, I hope we get him going to Costco and his, uh, his card gets stolen again. Uh, you know, a lot of stuff. A lot of potential for cool stuff there, depending on what he's going to be comfortable with. Because, you know, after... You know, when, when all's been said and done, this is Dark Side Phil. This is not your boogie who has no problem talking to people. This is Dark Side Phil. A guy who's been huffing exclusively his own farts, more than oxygen itself, for over a decade now. So he has been. He's, he's, uh, he's on a different level. He says he wants new ideas. He has a suggestion box and says no to every suggestion. You're right. Right, that, that's what I'm talking about. It's the fucking suggestion box, right? He wants, he wants to hear what the trolls want to say so he can debunk it. He's so curious about it. Like, bro, there's like 10 videos a day that come out that, that criticize him, that he can pick up something from. I think um, when, I, when it comes to videos, I think Atlas the Bookkeeper and Eviga, they both put out videos almost daily talking about what kind of stupid shit he's done and giving him criticism. You can just check them out. If he actually wanted to do this, he would have done this a long time ago, and now his business would look much differently. Alert. To be fair, visiting the snot fort is like visiting an African-style country, so you need to be current with all sorts of shots. No sure. Endeavor. Yeah, it, it, you know, I going into the fort snort is dangerous, dude. Uh, I, I bet Mike gets irritated halfway and quits. I think he's going to go through with it. He comes across as a pretty professional guy, so I think even if his subject is being very difficult to work with, which 
I don't think is going to be the case, seeing how DSP looks very excited and confident to be on this. I don't know. I guess we got to wait and see. Like I said in the beginning, confidence is when is, is kind of his weak spot because he doesn't really get confident. He gets arrogant, which, which is like excessive confidence that you can't really back up by anything, which he is a master of. My life is great. Everyone in chat laugh at him. Oh, did they? I, I didn't notice that, but uh, perhaps they did. And maybe if you can convince yourself that your life is great, maybe it will be. I guess it's it just a matter of how deluded you can get. Big up to uh, Officer Sanders for the subscription, dude. That's a very suspicious name right here. I'm starting to suspect oh, certain things. So according to Phil Dupuppy about dead people aren't real cause you can't talk to or interview them. Well, yeah, potentially. But, well, you can talk to other people that have been around them when they were alive. Alert. So Phil gets the final say on everything. This doc will definitely not be one-sided and will not just propaganda for Phil. Like I said, softball doc. Now, this will never happen. He will be talked out of it by OIC and the other dense they can. And what he is doing, he is trying to replace them. <laughs> yeah, I definitely think it's going to happen. Uh, but... It does concern me him having the final say over the, the, the final cut and what makes it out and what doesn't because, you, I mean, it's fucking DSP, dude. It's fucking DSP. I'd like to hear if anyone else on the FGC almost got their bunnies beat on a parking lot because SH asterisk asterisk talking was encouraged. Hold on. Uh, Real shame that Phil hasn't socialized his cat. That way he's okay when strangers are around. Positive reinforcement works for both dogs and cats. Oh yeah, sure, absolutely. But of course, who is who is the cat gonna meet? There's nobody coming in and out of the snort for it. The cat is just as isolated as DSP. Alert. I hope Jaha is brought up in some way when DSP's bunny's talking is addressed. Um, he, I can confirm he is in talks with uh, Mike, I believe. So Jaha is probably gonna be in there. Because, I mean, if, if Mike is going to bother to come on my stream, ask me if I'm going to be there, and I'm just one of the dudes talking about DSP, definitely Jaha is going to be in there. You know, a dude who actually knew him. A guy who was in contact with him and had some things happen between them. So, yeah, there's going to be plenty of people reaching out. I'll see. I'll, I'll reach out to the guy. Uh, he already sent me an email. I'll let him know if he wants to talk or something. I'm open to it. I had no intention of doing it at first, but since he bothered to actually come here and ask me personally and send me an email, I think I should just talk to the guy. I see nothing wrong with that. So yeah, I'm going to give him the same opinion that I give everybody publicly on the internet, so it's really nothing new, but I can kind of summarize it for him, you know? So what is the guy doing right now? Oh yeah, he is uh, playing a video game, which is uh, the sign that I should be clocking out, I think. Because if he's playing a video game, especially something like this, I'm out, dude. So thanks, everybody, for stopping by. Let's see what we all think about the interview. Let's let it uh, stew in our brains a little bit more. It's going to be a while until it actually comes out. So you never know, man. But um, I have some sort of trust in Mike. I think he's a professional guy. I think he's going to try his best to present this in an impartial or objective fashion. And that's kind of all you have to do with Phil. You got to show him for who he is, and he's just a toxic shitbag that is just naturally unlikable by people unless he tries very hard to be likable, in which case he fails most of the time. So thanks, everybody. See you next time. Peace out. And yong out.